What's going on, everybody? Shout out to all the Need to Know listeners hey. back again. But no, actually, no. Don't shout out to the Need to Know oh. listeners because it's not about you guys right now. Oh, sure. It's about my fellow Love is Blind stand, hey, okay? Right here, By right the here. time you guys watch this, the reunion would have happened. I'm so excited for the chaos, but it's only Tuesday. Yeah. I haven't watched it yet. And these guys, I can never talk about Love is Blind on the show, even though it's one of the biggest shows out right now because these guys haven't watched it. No, but, I watch it. I, no, I, I watch, watch it. it. Oh, you I do? Watch it. Yeah. It's so, just me. <laughs> but you're a big part of the show so you know we can't talk about it if you don't watch it so okay. but i have a question so the premise is basically mm -hmm. it's gonna sound crazy for people who don't watch it but you you talk to you're supposed to find your lover through a wall you don't see them at all i've did done that i've done that many a night that sounds on a little purpose? freaky no for real on purpose? That's happened to like through before. a wall like you can't see them glory hole no, that's it. No, that's exactly what came to mind. What do you mean? Come on. Come on. Like you just you well, other wall. No, it's like a glory hole type of like. But then, what do you mean through the wall? Then you sometimes, like it. in the bathroom, you just knock on the door. It's a unisex bathroom, and you that's just follow. That did not happen, Sava. That's not a glory hole. He just said you went to a random bathroom <laughs> and, and found a on hole the... in the wall and started talking. All right, keep going. Right? <laughs> so you're supposed to fall in love with someone. You know, the test is: can you fall in love without seeing someone? Mm -hmm. So they just okay. have these conversations for weeks and weeks and weeks. I just wanted to ask you guys, what is one question that you have to ask if you are a contestant on Love is Blind mm. to find your true lover? So, like I said... So it's critical, you know? I am one of the people in this room that do watch it. And say, Vaughn, I know you don't watch it, so I want to add just a bit more context, because Reggie is really smart for asking this question. Okay. You might be asking yourself, what should I ask someone that I've never met? <laughs> yeah, no, like, how would you get to know this yeah. person... But like the person you wind up with, you know right. how you have your non-negotiable. So how would I get that out of them? You know. And a lot of the time, bro, mm -hmm. these people leave the room and don't ask really important questions about each other. Mm -hmm. You see where I'm getting at now? So I wanted to put your mind there before you answered. Okay. You okay. I appreciate that. Yes. I don't watch the show. I've heard of the show. Mm -hmm. Great. But this show. gives me a lot of context on how mm -hmm. I would find love through a wall. Legit. <laughs> So You're this question to... is like challenging me to yeah. see the things that I really care about. Yeah. And I already know. Because you're supposed like... to fall in love with their soul. Yeah. And it's like, are you? <laughs> it's like, it's like blind speed dating. Think of that. That's what I Thank always you. do. I should have just said that. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. I like this. I like this. Okay, so who goes first? You want us to ask questions <laughs> that important. we really ask. Let me you want it. me to go first? Let me hear it. The first, are we doing like, give you both my questions or am I just giving you one? Let me hear it. We go Let's around in a room. Start with we want to start with one? Start with one, yeah. Okay, this is going to be a callback from last week's episode. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm going to, you know, like, sometimes <laughs> you got to know <laughs> the important things in life. Start off hot. So the first thing I need to ask somebody who I don't know, I can't see you, yeah. but this is important to me. All right? Yeah, let me hear it. Can you cook? And do you clean? Oh my god, okay. I thought you were gonna ask you if she sucks dick. dick. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, this is not random. That's the this, second question. This is from the last episode. That was not random. But. My first question is do you cook? Okay. Or can you cook? Because uh, cooking is a lost art. We gotta be honest. And sure. I'm not saying you gotta cook every night. Really? But I know There's a lot so many of, recipes online. I, though, bro, right? I know a lot of men and I know yeah. a lot of women specifically who's like, hey, I'm a Uber Eats girl. Yeah, it's a lot of okay. Mm -hmm. I just need to know if you have the ability okay. to cook. It doesn't mean I need you in the kitchen every day. I'm not going to be a misogynist in that way. But yeah. if I want a meal, I would like to know that my partner can cook because I can cook. Yeah. That's how I'm going to clean that up. I <laughs> I respect that that is you, like a preference of her. You were like a woman who could cook. Yeah. But like, yeah. it's just the, the way you frame and ask the question and when you bring it up is important. Because mm -hmm. imagine you yeah. don't even meet this person. And the first thing you ask when you sit down, yo, can you cook? It'd be like, oh, uh, yeah. But you like, <laughs> a little bit more context. It can come across a little, a, a certain type of way when I'm trying to talk to you. And you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know how to cook or clean? Not for you sure. Know? Like, Brush to the cool. side, right? And that's cool with me. Yeah. But you got to understand. Man, I come like I was raised by women, mm -hmm. right? Same. Women are the pillars of my life. So all of my grandmothers, uh, my mother, my aunts, everybody in my family that raised me, they get, can, they get busy in the kitchen. So you see how important it is. It is, is yeah. very important. Mm -hmm. And I understand the importance of food and a family structure. For sure. It brings us together. Literally. Yep. Right. Yep. So outside of the quality of food that you can cook, I just want to know that you can bring our family together. By being able to put a dish together. Mm -hmm. That's my that was first question. That was smooth. So can you cook <laughs> and then you clean? I cannot believe that was like the question though. Nothing about, hey, are you family oriented? You know, like nothing like that. If like, you can cook, you bring a family oriented that is not always, element. That is not always correlated as anyone. Well, in my head it does. So oh can you cook? Goodness. And can you clean them dishes after you cook? <laughs> and the There's best, a lot of women you can't who clean can cook. Dishes? 
You're supposed to clean it as if they cook. I got that. No, you don't. Nah, for real. You can do that too. <laughs> so why you, right, but you know why you need to cook and clean? Because some days mm-hmm. I may cook and I may need you to clean. So the day that you the cook, I might clean. The boy is so good. So we got to have <laughs> interchangeable qualities within our relationship. Cooking and cleaning is one of those things I would ask if I could not see what the person looked like. Yeah. And you know, Next, the quote, you know the quote, the best way to a man's uh, heart is his stomach. Mm-hmm. So yeah. that's an easy That's an easy way to that's okay. be right. What? What would you say? <laughs> Reggie, next. This is bugging the day. What's going on in here? Are y'all okay? Um, you know, besides the basics, like, you know, what oh, you do, shit. how old are you, and all that stuff, are you family oriented? Mm. I would ask, mm. you know, I would, you know, try to ease this into a conversation to not, to seem non-threatening, mm. but I would ask, what was the song that was playing in the final dance battle in U.S. or... Reggie? <laughs> is that a deal breaker, though? So let's say that's a deal breaker. Yes. That's a deal breaker? Because it's like... No. I just feel like... In the final dance you could, battle. You could you could just tell so much about a person <laughs> if they don't know the answer to that question. Yeah. Like you've never watched this. Was it? Pump, pump it up. See? Hey, if you don't hey, know the, If you don't know what, this what, answer, what, what, you gotta pump, go. Pump, 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 pump it up. Like it's so simple. It really it really talks about their childhood. Yeah. Because it's like, I I'm not even I know this seems like I'm joking, but it's like if you don't know that, I'm just like he might be a lame. <sighs> Nigga might be a lame. I guess He's not more, culture. The more like mainstream or less yeah. niche way, it would be like, oh, what's like Kanye West's greatest album? Like some something like that to yeah. know that they grew up knowing the culture. You know? Mm-hmm. Okay. What should, what, you guys are good. What is like? You guys if y'all good. had to twerk to this, what it look like? If I what had type to twerk of like this, question is that? Oh, this that's your question. You show us. Nah, I'm not, yeah, I don't want to see that? nobody twerk to this though. I ain't gonna lie. I okay. want to see them hit a dance routine. If that's I see like, any one of y'all twerk to this, we're gonna fight. That's a classic movie. I like that question. Though. Thank you. Because you guys serve this is the most important movie of my life. Come on. <laughs> I'm a millennial's dream. <laughs> Ask my mom. She's I'm so serious. She doesn't even speak you. English, and she knows I love that movie. So yeah. <laughs> hmm. What would I ask? Um shit. You know, if could you describe to me your facial features? <laughs> no, uh, yo, that's, uh, that's, uh, no, uh, that's, uh, no, that's against the rules. Yeah. The whole point is not to. Love yo, blood. You, you wait, can't talk on. about race. You can't talk about skin color. He says no, love no, no. There was this one guy. Love it's love. like a joke. I wish I remember his name, but he all oh, clad. I think he was like, he was like, yo. I mean, you're not supposed to ask about their appearance. But he's like, yo, like, you look good. Can I see it from the front? Like, <laughs> that's a fire <laughs> question. <laughs> Like, we were oh, yeah. making fun of him because he just, like, wanted to know if the girl had a fat ass. And he was, like, trying to figure out how to ask her. That's really important. Shout, Shout out to Clay. Life. Clay. Clay follows us on IG. Shout Does out to Clay. He? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did. Shout he out did. to Clay. Shout out to Clay. That's so crazy. Clay. All right. Let me ask a real one. If we were to leave this experiment mm-hmm. and look at each other mm-hmm. and realize that we were no longer happy, would you continue this marriage? I don't think what love is... Mean? I don't think love is that blind, yo. Oh no! Yeah. Between me and you, like I've been uh-huh. watching the show, and I feel like a lot of those people start problems once they see what the person look like. Yeah, they nah, switch yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. It be but the premise roses. of the show mm-hmm. is just asking what it is that, no pun intended, yeah. what I need to know. He's uh-huh. cooking. So okay. continue. Get out of the the the, the physicality of it, mm. and what would be the first question that Alex asked? I want to know too. I, I, yeah, you I asked two, I you asked two know. physical I, questions. I was, Alex. I was being real with y'all. I was being funny and real. I was lying. I, I, I would really ask this. Do you want kids? Okay. That's mm. a big one. Because you guys can't disagree on that, you know? like. Yeah. And But they be disagreeing on that shit. Okay. I like, like that. I like and that. they're they'll still start, getting engaged. Yeah, they'll get engaged and be like, wait, you want kids? Mm-hmm. They'll be like, yeah. What's the answer that you're looking for when you ask that? Uh, a hell okay. yeah. Okay, follow up question. Okay, journalist. Yeah, that boy, the journalist, right? <laughs> a hell yeah. Okay. Right. All right. All right. For me, I guess oh, I want your kids, yeah. Daddy. For me, that would be wait, what? a non negotiable. Wait, 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 wait what'd you say? Say it again? Sorry. <laughs> I need to go, yes, I want your kids, daddy. Oh, well, See, I need a quick, I need a swift, right? A lot it. of women like listeners that. just clutch their pearls right now. <laughs> All right, y'all joke with me, but is love really blonde? I got one. No, 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 that's why I want to end. You okay, spoiled my ending. I'm sorry. Because I was going to say all these seven scenes of Love is Blind has proven to me is that love is not blind. Right. <laughs> okay, please go, Pierre. Right. Wait, hold up, yeah. hold up. I do want to protect my brother, Pierre. Uh, Pierre, you're married already. Yeah. We're trying to catch up <laughs> yeah. to you. Okay. I think you should be absolved from this segment of the podcast. No, I could tell you what it was, you know, before I got married. I like that. That boy's I mean, good. this is just a fun okay. game. Go for it. I tried to save him. Nah, and too, you that know, this could it. this could work for other people that are, you know, trying to get yeah, yeah, into the whole thing. Clean work. up on hear about you. So, <laughs> so my question is, and I you know, what is your toxic trick? Like what is what is 
what does it look like to be in an argument with you? Or that's like a question. Not, that's a great on, question. not on good terms. That's a great like, question. Like are you are you the type to uh um what's the word I'm looking for? Are you the type to draw back? Mm-hmm. Are you the type to go silent? And if you know what does si- what does your silence look like? What does it mean? That's a good one. Right? That's so, a good one. Because like in those that. rooms, they try mm-hmm. to be their best selves as if they're perfect people. Exactly. Yeah. Like, and fuck out of it. I'm I've always thought to that like before you commit to someone, you should know how you guys are when you guys are angry with each other. Yeah. So like that could tell a lot. Because some people, you know the type of people, <laughs> I can't deal with the type of people who like just say things when they're angry just to say them, but they don't mean them. Oh, I, just, I can't. I can't. Are you one of those? I can't. <laughs> Me? No. <laughs> no, not sure. no, I'm not one of those. I'm <laughs> actually very calculated with my hate. <laughs> Wait, you be hating on a girl? I she hate mean, any, like, I might fuck? hate something that she might do, but, but it's premeditated. You, it's if like, you say it, you mean it. And I, I can respect that. Like, yeah. 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 I don't just say things to say things. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not here to just hurt you. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, no, that's not me. But if you want her, you got some because you yeah. premeditated. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, it's been there. Okay. Alex, I would like us to go back around the room because yeah. oh, what's up? my question, like, the last one is, like, mm. another callback. Oh, what's up? <laughs> no, nah, go for it. No, I, you go first. About what I would ask? Yeah, second question. Uh, nah. And this is your wife. Your potential this is my wife. wife. You're looking for the wife. Yeah, that was a really good one with that the conflict. That was a great one. That was you. a really good yeah, How do you. you deal with conflict, mm-hmm. essentially, is what you're saying? Yep, I, yep. I love that one. Let me see. Um, How close are you to your friends? Okay. Yeah, I think that's a good... Because that would tell a lot about a person, mm-hmm. right? Like, if you're too close, if you're overly dependent on them, um. or... If you don't have any of any. them, and then you'll be overly dependent on me. Mm. Oh, so you good. yeah, you yeah, good. yeah, yeah. Good. That's, give it up. <laughs> I was like, yeah, and, yeah, I ate that. <laughs> and, and, and to the the makeup of your friends, because you know like what they look like. Not, like if you chose the wrong one, yeah. Damn, nah, oh, I'm not. Shit, that's that's a whole yeah. other level. But nah, I'm not talking about that. Okay, I'm talking about more so like because I know some guys don't like it when their their girl have a bunch of male friend, really close male friends, and some don't care. So yeah, if you're the top to, you know, I don't mind if she got male friends. He just can't be the most. He just can't be Bob the Builder. <laughs> wait, 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 what? So he, he can't be deficient in an. Well, he can't be su- sufficient in an area that you're deficient in. It. No, no, no. I'm, I'm Bob. I'm A the Builder. I'm just saying, like, <laughs> he can't be just. You know what I'm saying? Just knocking. Like, like the man of her life. The you know? man of her life. Yeah. She's, no, like when she got a flat tire, she can't call him before she calls nah, you. Nah, she can't. Yeah, exactly. Well, by the time that you're her boyfriend, she should obviously call you first. Like, Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. I'm not mad at that. Mm. Reggie, you got one? For me, like, okay, now that I'm, now that I said a stupid question for my first one, let me be serious. <laughs> So when I think about marriage, obviously my parents are still together. So I'm very like, Same. I'm in it for the long run. Okay. Like, right. yeah. so I'm thinking about, you know, when we get older forever, we're going to be together forever. I think about, I haven't, I shouldn't be thinking about this a lot, but I think about my parents when they get old passing away, you know? Yeah. So I want someone who will be there for me when my family members pass away when we go through really hard times. Mm-hmm. So I guess it wouldn't be a specific question, but I'll try to, introduce those topics and see like how they will act in very serious situations when things got really tough like yeah. are you gonna be there for me like because it's us too. like we're a team when mm-hmm. we go through financial things when god forbid our house you know our house gets taken away stuff like that have you ever been through anything like that have you gone through stuff like that did you were you able to weather the storm i'm just looking for someone in the long run like that will go the long haul so i Damn. guess i would ask a bunch of stuff like that you know that's great Reggie and Pierre got it on lock. Man. I know, yes. like they they really prepped yeah. for this show. They're trying to get married. And what's so crazy is they're the ones in like <laughs> serious relationships. <laughs> so I was like, wait, hold up, y'all really gave this some thought. Yeah. And that's why we're like still in it because, well, I'll just speak for myself. Like I, these things, I do think about these things, mm-hmm. and my my man has these things, so that's Amazing. why we're still together. So I love that. I love that. Amazing. I love that. And for me, what's up? I was gonna say, and no no relationship or marriage is perfect, so it all requires work. So yep. That's a fact. Absolutely. In perfect relationship. I think for me, if I had my last question, my second question. <laughs> oh, my God. No, I really, this, again, no pun intended. Watch I this. really need to know this. Okay. Okay. Let me hear it. If I can't see you and you can't see me, and then because culture is such a, 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 a huge thing, I may not be able to tell what your ethnicity or race is based on your dialect. I just might not be able to, right? Like, we've seen, whoa, Vicky, she sounds black. Because she's yeah. trying, no, she tries to sound like. I, I know what you mean. I know no, what you I'm mean. Not, yeah, I'm yeah. not like 
Again, I know what you mean. Behind a wall, I may be confused. <laughs> Sometimes it happens. You know, uh, we what get is, caught what is lacking. here. Yeah. So for me to really, really filter out the love of my life, if love was blind, I would ask her, how does she say nigga? <laughs> that is cheating. <laughs> Yo, boys, well. Now. That is cheating because if she can't say it, you know she's like not yeah. black. And yeah. that means you Boom. know what she looks like. That's why I like it. <laughs> that is the way, you know, there is only That's why I like a it. few acceptable gotcha. ways That's for me one. to get that off. Now, That's a I told y'all I'm not saying that word anymore. You just, you you just said it no, like three times. No, no, no. no you just said it. That's cheating. I need for context. I need it for context. Nah, you could have said the N-word. But I need it for context. The N-word has context. No, 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 no. So, <laughs> from now on, yeah. anytime that I say that word, there's Nigga. only going to be one way. Nigga. Say Vaughn. You was, what? What? So, explain this. This is the one only question way. I got for you. <laughs> when you say nigga, right. a lot of people are saying. Give me your phone. Give me your phone. Give me your phone. That's it. If she says it anything close to that, give me your phone. I know where she coming from. <laughs> she just left the Trump rally. And if, <laughs> oh my goodness. If you hear that ER with it, you know what time it is, right? <clears throat> so mm-hmm. that would be very important. I need to know if Such how, good when, where you say it. Because there are like some people get that off in certain settings. Absolutely. Like, I no don't know what your algorithms ethnicity. look like. I don't know what you're into. Everybody's a little bit kinky, right? Yeah. So have you ever heard of race play? Nah, break that one down it? for me. How it go? How it go? Nah, because what you... This is supposed to be a wholesome <laughs> yeah, yeah. topic about what love. You, what, what, <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying, like... So, like, that's when you act... You, she acts like she a nigga? It's like, and then you act like you Puerto Rican. Like, how does that go? <laughs> race play. <laughs> Sometimes it's like, you gotta... You, yeah. you know, you, you're doing it for the people that came before you. Is what they say. Mm, your ancestors. Wait, what, you, what you mean? <laughs> you are saying, no, no, keep going. I'm lost. What happened? Wait, so like, you... I'm lost, and that's all I need to know. <laughs> who, who got me? He got me. I'm just saying, depending on how, if, when, where you can say that word, uh-huh. she's gonna tell me a lot. So I need to know if you can cook and clean, and I need to know how comfortable you feel saying that word. So nothing about her morals, you know, her personality. Nah, just... We get. Th- I should. Leave, I should learn that in the room. Yeah. We're gonna get there after. I'll pick up on that quick. But the basis for me is like, all right, can you do this thing? And oh, where is your comfortability level with saying that word? We did a terrible job explaining because <laughs> you, when you leave the room, you're engaged to this woman. Yeah. That's how you pick. Shit forever. No, I'm so all be... she has to do is cook and clean mm-hmm. and be able to say the N word. She has to have the ability to cook and clean, like Good. myself, because I could cook and clean too, uh-huh. and I could also say nigga. I choose not to. That's another one. That's another you know what? Fact. I'm realizing what you're doing. You're, you're finally trying to get ways off, to like... get your nigga. Oh, I'm getting it out. You're getting you it out. You said it like ten times already. So I didn't say it. I'm getting it. Now. You said it like ten times. You're yes. finding creative and alternative ways to still get it off. No, it, I'm just letting you know. These are things now. Mm-hmm. Now, yeah, yeah. right, right. And this is the last thing I'm saying. Then we're gonna introduce this podcast. Yes. <laughs> No, I'm not going to say that. But there's just different scenarios and how that comes up. And, and, and yeah, I'm, I'm doing the filtering process in that way. These are great questions, y'all. I think so, too. I think this is a terrific job. And you want to know the funniest part about this conversation? Most people don't ask their spouse this and they can see them. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, praying for y'all out there. Like, if she got a... No, mm. I ain't going to say that. No, no, no. Nah, it's a safe space. Yeah. Because it's you know a safe what it is? <laughs> you already brought a race play. You better. You, you should just, just say whatever you want to say. That's some freaky role play. Like, what's that? All right, forget it. <laughs> I told you. Think about your ancestors. All right, never mind. You got Sometimes you, you got to get it back in blood. We're going to talk about Lil Durk a little bit later. Get it back in blood. <laughs> All of these things. It's a recurring theme on mm. this podcast. We just have to be, you know... um, what did what did uh Hurricane Chris say? Hey, baby, hey, baby. Oh, educated. You you got to be educated <laughs> just to get in it. some of these things <laughs> these to understand that. But Reggie, that was right. an amazing opening. Yes. Thank you for bringing that. I have no idea what Love Is Blind is. Yeah, um, you would like the show because it's yeah. very social experimenty, and I, like I know that. you like that type of I shit. I really do, Reggie. Who my band on that show? You know, Shorty, that was with Clay. What? That Who's sure that was with Clay? That's not, that's not this season. <laughs> yeah, you like AD. AD. That's Dirty Mac. <laughs> shout out to they Clay. They broke up. They broke hey, up. shout out to Clay. Obviously, it ain't work out. Oh, they broke up? Yeah. yeah. Oh, you ain't know. Yeah, you don't watch. They're they not together. Okay. They're not together. Okay. You're right. I mean, that was, also, that was also like season five or six. Season, yeah. six, season seven she's, now is probably Hey, guess what? She's still on my mind. Got it. Oh. You should ooh. slide into the into her DM. I think she... I'm like, you know what I mean? Uh, Mike, y'all making me blush. Nah. 
<laughs> I love that. With that being said, y'all, it's the Needs and No Podcast. We're here on another episode. Thank y'all for tuning in. Reggie, thank you. That was an amazing Wasn't opener. Wasn't that fun? Love is blind. We, we, again, y'all get to know us each and every week. I know what Alex is looking for in someone. I know what Reggie... You just gave us the two questions. That wasn't enough. We need more. I love how he kept trying to ask about her appearance. <laughs> and we are like, Alex, no. Me? And then he did it again. <laughs> Could you put your fingers on your face and describe how the nose feels? No, wait. Uh, he was literally like, his first question was like, what do you look like? <laughs> like, Alex. All right, so watch this. Uh, what, what exactly, what, is that, what exactly are you mm. looking for? Like, physically. What's fit for me? I'm asking what's the <laughs> I got one. I love that. I know. I, I'm very confident. I know Alex's type. Wait, I don't have a type. Y'all want me to have a type? Nah, in you a good that. way. In a good way. Like, if I see a girl, I yeah. know that you would find her pretty. Like, okay. I know that. I know yeah, that. Yeah. Facts. Yeah. I got one name. Are you good? That'll sum it all up. Don't say Are y'all good at here? <laughs> no, we ain't gonna say no. Wait, you don't, wait, you don't have a type? Mm-hmm. No, I don't got a type. Yes, I don't. Yo, y'all, y'all want me to have a type <laughs> so bad. I hate when people say that to me, so I'm sorry. <laughs> no, 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 I don't no, have a type. We all know each other's type. <laughs> no, I'm not we, saying we got to tell the public. We know but, your type, man. And I know uh, Reggie's type. You guys know one person I've dated. <laughs> <laughs> I, that's what, exactly. <laughs> but, Reggie, okay, tell him. I'm not talking about... Tell like, him, no, tell him Reggie. Now, nah, Reggie, fight back. But listen, when I talk about Reggie's type, I'm not talking about men. Oh. Like, the you talking about... you talking about? Like, I'm not... I'm talking about men when I'm looking at her type. I, like, she has a man. I will like. I will always honor, respect her relationship. So when I talk about Reggie's type, I'm talking about the type mm. of because her and I have the same type. Yeah, oh. that's true. That's true. That's true. When it comes, okay, like, okay, okay, so I know Reggie's type. Okay. okay. I know Alex's type. I don't have a type. Alex is no <laughs> save on type. And like, I don't have a type. Why are you lying? I, I, I no like type. them all colors, shapes, sizes. Whoa. That's why I know it. <laughs> so everything. That's why I know it, King. <laughs> what you mean? Yeah, you mean? Yeah, you mean? So <laughs> what you mean? <laughs> it's the Need to Know Podcast. Oh. Thank y'all for pulling up. We appreciate y'all. It's what you yeah. need to know when you need to know on the Need to Know Podcast. I go by the name Savon, S-A-V-O-N, and the N is for goddamn. I forgot it this week. Wow. What? <laughs> That's not like you. It's okay. We can move on. It is. Oh, it is. Like you, so Last okay. week was the NBA. Oh, oh, I know what it is. NFL? I know what it is. It's not for the NFL. No. It's not for the NBA. <laughs> okay. It's for never remembering what the fuck the end is for. Oh <laughs> my god! That oh, that's a lot going on in my head. He just be saying whatever comes to his mind. I really do. I really do. I like that guy. Hey, what up, y'all? It's your boy A. As always, the Paco Ramon Poppy. Never alone, always with the posse. Hello, guys. It's me, Reggie. I feel so happy and so blessed to be here because I love that the Love Is Blind conversation was a hit. <laughs> and oh my god, we're just gonna do a little chain reaction. So I'm gonna introduce the man with the plan behind the cam. Ooh, I stole flawless. that from Savon. <laughs> that's flawless. Ooh. Yo, PSA. I'm not gonna go too much into it, but hey, just make sure you watch what you eat. All right. <laughs> not <laughs> not everything out there okay. is is good for you. No matter how well they advertise it, not everything is good for you. Yo, bro, I made mm. I, I sinned against my body last week, I and I ate something that body. I shouldn't have. And I was paying the consequences for it for like a few hours. It felt, it felt like my stomach was in shambles. He no. got something. He got a very popular fast food item. We don't have to say it, but I'm like that's what ha- that's what he's talking about, guys. But Pierre, do you think you have a weak stomach though? Yeah, nah. you, you know you, you. But be honest, be honest. You got the muscles. You one of them niggas that can eat over five hundred calories a day and shit. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Facts. I mean, listen, my stomach is strong as hell. It's it's just um I haven't been working out in a little bit, probably like a couple months. Okay. So I think everything is just kind of I got I got I got pe- uh, pudge. <laughs> well, there's a lot of subcutaneous fat in here, so, mm. so yeah, I need a little bit more motivation. So yeah. <laughs> that's, a that's, a great, that's a great word. <laughs> that you, is an amazing word. Made me think about ubiquitous. Don't I don't know why. But, I don't know why. Keep oh, I'm ubiquitous. Sorry. So we just spit I words. love using a big yeah. word. Yeah. Facts. Yeah. What up? Yeah. I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Oh, also another health nah, I'm not gonna say that, but yeah. What? I'll I say it next time. Fact. Save on a day. All right, so bad. Last, last thing, right? So I got um I got insurance now and all that, you know what I mean? It's been a while. Oh, congrats. Okay, period. For the for the free uh freelancers out there, I got insurance. But um Okay, I dropped the link for Yeah, you. I've been through that struggle yeah, for so, years. So it's yeah, crazy. It's a real deal. Uh long story short, I got a blood test and apparently I'm pre diabetic. What? But they say it's a three month kind of result or a three month report as to like your your health. But that just means I haven't worked out and I've been eating good, so yeah. You gotta get because your health in order. You can reverse this by just eating correctly and uh, having your body get back to ketosis. Yep. Yeah, get like all that sugar healthy. out your body. Yeah, yeah, like if you have like high cholesterol, you can reverse yeah. it. So guys. I want people to know that. Though, yeah, because be people just assume they just have to take the high blood medication. No, yeah. man, no. just go back to vegetables and fruit. Facts. Yeah, and a leaf. Push ups. 
push ups, mm-hmm. sit ups, a lot of hit you know, exercises. Um, mm-hmm. The what sauna, is? the sauna definitely helps. Hit them with it. Um, what else? I don't know if y'all heard, and I, I'm not gonna recommend this because there's a lot of like stereotypes and stigmas around this exercise, and I don't even know if it's an exercise, but I did read the that... shake weight. Oh my. <laughs> Close with, enough. With the cooling system? Y'all ever seen that? So, we're going to talk about a lot of people who got cooked this year. Oh, man. I'm going to get y'all, like, opinion on who's been cooked, who's cooked, who's finished, who's overburnt, who's, like, who can come back from being cooked. But I know, I read in one of, like, um, the Diddy indictments that he was fucking with a sauna. Like, that was his vibe. Wait, what? He was fucking with the sauna? Like, oh, in the sauna? Like, he would turn the heat all the way up while doing whatever he was doing. These are all allegations. I don't want no smoke with the Combs family. I heard y'all running down on people. Yeah, I heard y'all running down in the city. But there's a lot of ways to get your <laughs> exercise. And so I just want to make sure everybody's healthy, everybody. And Pierre, you, like, the the theme and the trend of who you are is health as well. Right? Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So the fact that you feel like, hey, everybody, please go make sure y'all check out your blood. It made me feel like, oh shit, I I, I need to go really get checked out because I know right. you're really like active. Um, unfortunately, I haven't been as active as I, I need to be, as I'd like to be. Yeah. Um, I could tell because you, you used to hit me like, yo, P, I've been in the gym. You used to send me the um, you know, updates, the updates Aww. and all that. But what I will say is, I did get my blood work done recently, and yeah, I'm nice. good, mm-hmm. valid, nice, and I'm all right. Congrats, yeah, so congrats. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. But see, P, I feel bad for you because I feel like if I have all the muscles you got, shit just supposed to hold up. <laughs> <laughs> it don't work like that, unfortunately. You gotta I keep know. it up. I know. Especially as we get older. This is why this is a great conversation because you'll see some people and be like, "Yo, this person looks incredibly healthy," mm-hmm. and they could still have some underlying. No, definitely. Yeah, you yeah. never know what's going on. Yeah. Oh my god, am I the most? Because now Pierre dropped down in the rankings. Am I the most fit person on the pod now? Wait, 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 oh wait. my god. This is so said, crazy. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. I ain't say I'm still strong. I'm still... You haven't worked out a month, you said. I'm still strong, though. Yeah, but she be in the gym. I said nah, fit, right. not strong. Ah, uh, yeah, you got it. I go to the gym every single day, okay? You got it. Come you got on. It. Oh, my gosh. And that's with work. This is Hello. so crazy. I got to catch up. My fault. Also, I do want to shout us out. I was waiting for you to get to that. <laughs> also, oh, I do want to oh shout God. us out. I want to also shout out hey. the people who have supported us mm. throughout this year, throughout yeah. the years in general, because um, over this past week, we have won a Signal Awards, a podcast hey, awards. It's us. Uh, yes, sir. It's, it's honestly, when I got the email, when I got the notification. You drop down to your knees. Bro, it's like, I drove down there why? Morning. How does this keep happening? <laughs> like, yeah. I don't know. I'm just super grateful, super appreciative. Yeah. Um, we won an award, y'all, and it, it couldn't happen without y'all, honestly, if we really being real. And it also couldn't happen without the, uh, you know, committee and the academy that voted for us. Well, shout out to the academy. Let's shout out to the academy. Shout out to the academy. Yeah. 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 We're here to say what we actually won. Let's do it. Absolutely. We want the Need to Know Podcast won the gold for the 2024 Best Co-Host Team. Oh, come on. Oh, yes. oh come yes. on. Okay. Now, okay. we had some stiff competition. Yeah, we did. I'm talking like stiff arm. This nigga used to be an NFL player to both of them. <laughs> How, uh, Ocho. Ho- Hall of Fame. And Shannon Sharp. These niggas used to stiff arm niggas. It was stiff. <laughs> and shout out to Nightcap, the Nightcap <laughs> podcast, um, and all the people in that category. I will be honest. When I saw who we were up against, I didn't think we had a shot. Yeah, me either. I just closed up the. You guys didn't believe in us? Nah, I didn't. Shout out to us though. <laughs> I didn't think we was gonna make it through. <laughs> Shout out to us though. You know, so obviously my job, yeah. uh, I work at HBO, and we submitted on HBO's behalf. We submitted a lot of podcasts that we work on, right? right. So I'm like, hey man, maybe, maybe, maybe they pull some strings for us. Because they saw the Need to Know podcast. They know that we're affiliated. I'm affiliated. I work with the team. So I thought maybe they may have pulled some strings to, like, give us the award. I'm not going to lie to you. I That's what I thought. I don't want to know this. No. So I want to know this. I want to know that we actually earned it. And now you're like, it's like telling me Santa Claus isn't real. No, no, no. But I also needed to know that yeah. information. So I asked the appropriate people, like, hey, we did win. Thank you. I appreciate it. But... Did you have anything to do with this win? Right, any input on it. I just want to know right. your standing if you judge this category because, oh, okay. you know, the, it could be some insider trade. And they, they, you know, everybody was like, nope, nothing to do with it. We found out when you found out. You guys won fair and square, and that's because of the quality of your work. It's because of the support of the Salute. people who listen to you. And it's also because y'all are just really dope. So congratulations to us. Thank y'all again for rocking Ooh. with us. Salute, Signal Awards. It is no... It's not a small deal. You know what I'm saying? It is a very big deal to us. 
Uh, we do this independently. Y'all know how this comes every single week. Yeah. Um, I don't want to give like an award speech, but I am very grateful. Speaking of speeches, there's a little, you know, a little cute little reception that we were invited to. Hello. So is there literally going to be like a presentation like, oh, and the winner is, and then we go up and get it? I don't believe so. Okay. Because oh. I'm like, if there's a speech, that's all save on. Yeah. I feel like that's <laughs> more. I love a good speech. I love, me, I love public yeah. speaking, but yeah. this moment is, I want him to make a speech. <laughs> it, it, I don't think so. I don't speech. think it's one of those things. Oh, okay. okay I okay. would definitely call because the category that we won and the beautiful thing about this it is a collective win yeah it's for the best Mm co-host which means they appreciated the way that we have chemistry the way that we bounce off of each other you know what we bring as a collective is the most important thing so if we had to give a speech reggie i'm sorry to break it to you (laughs) you would be talking why? All all of us. Us. Because it's all of us. We all oh, won the award. Okay, like, okay. Yeah, all of us will you be speaking. You got one. Yeah. In and out. Yeah. Keep, yeah, keep I love it speaking. Yeah. Yeah. But I really like that because um, for co-hosts, the meaning of that, like, that takes years to cultivate. Like, a good chemistry. It that does. takes years, it you know? Does. And we've so. had different variations of this project. So, to sure. see people realize and love this chemistry, it means a lot. It does. Oh, it does. So again, shout out to the Signal <laughs> Awards. We thank y'all. We appreciate y'all. Thank you to everybody who voted because this was an award that was voted by not only the audience has some influence on it, but the Academy of the Award Ceremony. Hello. They also played a very, very pivotal moment in reviewing these things and listening to it. So thank y'all. We appreciate it. The Signal Awards. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. Like this is just crazy. Like this entire year has been insane. Where you gonna put your? And, where you gonna put your award at? You know, I, I, I ain't gonna lie. Wait, hold on, hold on, I ain't gonna lie. So I, I did, I, I, I did think Literally. about something today. Uh huh. I know you thought about it. You know, I'm a very reflective person. Yeah. I can't lie. Like I That's... do get emotional. I don't show it because I'm a Capricorn. Capricorns, we do not show that shit exteriorly. Is that a word? Ex- uh, on, I think you meant ex- the exterior. externally. Ex- ex- uh, externally is definitely the word. Because I, I knew it. Yeah, for on on the I said it. <laughs> externally, I would never show my emotions, but oh, yeah. internally. Yeah. It forced me to really think about all that we've done as a podcast this year, huh. uh, from a sold out mixer wow. to you know being acknowledged by the biggest streamer in the world, new studio. to the new studio. Yeah. Like all of these things just hit me at once when we were announced that this award was ours. Um, and so I did get emotional. You cried. You must have thought cried. I, I, I almost did. I you gave almost thought cry. That's so, all right. Whenever we get like really good news, <laughs> yeah. I call Alex, and I almost I, I wanted to call you, but you know, me me and Alex been on the phone recently. <laughs> no, it's been peaceful. No, I know it's been. It's, it's been good. <laughs> I love Alex. It's yeah, been good. No, it's been great. It's productive as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, as, as brothers, you know what I'm saying? As brothers, you know, like I, I felt like, you know oh, what? Shit. This was just one of these moments where yeah. you you kind of speeding through life. And I know a lot of our listeners who listen to us on that commute to work, who yeah. listen to us at work, who listen to us just to kind of escape from their everyday routine. Yeah. Um, these are just one of those moments where I had to really sit with myself and be appreciative of all of the things that we've done because I think we do it subconsciously. Like, sometimes we don't even slow down. An autopilot. Autopilot. I feel like that every week. I got For sure. And I, I don't think it's a bad feeling. It's just that we're just so accustomed to know yeah. what we have to do yeah, each yeah, week. Yeah, yeah. We, so forgot, shout out to y'all. we forgot to... Uh, this is breaking news. We, we have a new cast member. We forgot to uh, bring them in. We did? Yeah. <laughs> oh, you guys about the money cake? No, no, no. It's oh. a new cast member. There's a new... There you, is? You guys missed it? Mo- hmm? Wait, Breaking hold news. up. How, hmm? Boom. That shit better than mine. We got a new cast member. <laughs> because this, hmm? I was supposed to do this at the top of the episode. Oh, shit. But we're airing this on Halloween. I want to be festive. Sorry. <laughs> but then I, when I remember. It's just when I remember. <laughs> I just looked over. Wait, guys, look at the YouTube. I put my Halloween costume on, but I felt so bad because then Savon was doing his emotional speech. <laughs> <laughs> so that I regret it, I took it off. He being mad serious, right? He's already so put on a mustache. But then Pierre put it out. So I'm gonna pop with this mustache on. Oh, I, shit. I, 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 that <laughs> is thank you for celebrating Halloween. Honestly. No. I forgot it was Halloween week. I was so busy about us. <laughs> Me too. I was so concerned with us. But yeah, man. Thank oh, y'all again. Shit. Signal Awards. Um Patreon. Alex, Reggie, y'all been holding the Patreon down. Yes, please go uh subscribe to our Patreon account. All right. That is uh patreon.com slash need to know pod say Vaughn will join us 
shortly, I promise you. <laughs> Shout out to Armand from Stay Busy. He sat down with us this week and we had a great conversation. I didn't know if it was a need to know podcast, Reggie, or if it was first take. Oh yeah, we got into shout out to JJ Reddick. <laughs> shout out to <laughs> Come on, what else? What's his face? What else? Uh, uh, another one. AR fifteen. AR fifteen. What else? What else? And AK forty seven. There we go. Yo, Period. Reggie, stop shooting at me when I'm not around. <laughs> what? what you mean? What is that? Yo, Reggie, They're just guns. I'm not gonna lie. Just because I'm not there, I'm always there. What you mean? <laughs> oh, are you sh- mad at me? Nah, <laughs> I'm not. I'm never mad. But now you was with us just shit. because I wasn't on the Patreon doesn't mean that I'm not gonna see when you talk shit about me. I wasn't talking shit. <laughs> you did the nice way of she talking. Did? Sh- How she you said it? It was some J Cole shit. <laughs> what was it? Oh my god! You pulled some J Cole shit. What she did? You shot at your friends. <laughs> And said, oh, wait, I didn't mean to shoot up my friends, but I'm going to shoot up my friends. What Reggie, am I saying? I acknowledge you. I don't remember. And I accept you for mm. understanding and knowing sports. Oh, my God. No, oh, that was... you did hear that. I did not. I do not. Mm. And we had a conversation off air years ago about, hey, guys, these jokes are getting old. Yes. I've been very conscious and very intentional about making sure whenever we talk about sports, mm-hmm. I acknowledge your knowledge on sports. Yeah. So for you to get on Patreon <laughs> while I'm not around and be like, hey guys, so I really hate when yeah, she ain't no, 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 no. wait, wait, okay, she ain't okay, say okay. when nigga <laughs> You have a problem. No, I can't say the N-word the regular way. So, so I got it. Oh my god. It's still nigga. Nigga! So oh, we're never to... gonna stop saying it. What? Oh, you you just been gaslighting. Like no, you us. can re- 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 <laughs> it. You're never gonna stop. So that. I can oh, acknowledge shit. You saying when the, those people like yeah. you know what I'm saying like I'm just saying I respect it. You don't no, gotta no, shoot at no. me no more. I, I said I never said you did it recently. I said it has been done before. You're good. And we then, have podcasts here, wow. and then we address it. And it's never happened again. We it's punished. never happened again. So I want you to know. Please make sure you go 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 tap into the Patreon. Yes. Armand is there. Yes, Reggie. She's Reggie is giving it up. Yes, she I is. Am. She, this she is good because this is good promo for the Patreon because they have yeah. no idea what we're talking about. So, <laughs> so please go watch our latest episode. What's happening, man? What's happening? Go subscribe. Huh? It's been fun. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Now, with that being said, it's I don't know what y'all want to begin. Do y'all want to be, do y'all want to begin with us? It has been a lot going on. Yeah, um, we got a ton to talk about, and I can give a, a, a quick preview at the top of the episode. We all gonna talk about Lil Durk. We all gonna talk about Tyler, the creator. Yeah. Um, there's a ton to talk about. I know personally, I do want to talk about some things. Um, but where would y'all like to begin? Because again, we can talk about a lot, or we could begin with us. We get the Durk. Wait, what do you want to get to? We with have us? more talks about us. It's it's our podcast. No, I want to talk about us for the whole two hours. But our producer would kill Let's do us. It. Well, the AI shit. So oh, we don't oh, have shit. to start with it. We don't have to start. I with mean, it. you kind of led with it, say long. <laughs> I, no, I just gave us options. Mm. I gave us options. We do not have to start with the AI shit. We can get to the AI shit later because right. niggas is locked up. <laughs> you said it. You just said it again, bro. Like, Yo, what's up with you, man? What's up? You love the word. It's okay. Join me. No, I didn't say join that. me. Twenty. Yes, you... Oh my oh, god! god. You, you, did... you just said it. It's gaslighting. You know? that shit. Yeah. Just yo, cut that shit. <laughs> nah, she leave. No, for real, cut what? that shit. Yo, 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 yo Kieran. Yeah. Yo, it's a journey. real quick. We go cut. Bro. We go come right back in. No, we're not. Three. All right, people is locked up. <laughs> oh my gosh, we're keeping all of that in. <laughs> no, so, so, yeah, folks are definitely locked. You know, up. we we could definitely talk about little Dirk. Yeah. I can't believe. And and let me not even say I can't believe because I'm sure well, we all can't believe it. I'm just tired. Let's tell him what's going on first, right? Dirk has been arrested on a murder for higher charges. These are federal charges. I think this was, quote unquote, committed in the state of California. Uh, just some background on the charge on murder for hire in the state of California. If the person does die who you conspired to kill, it, I think it's up to 20 years to life. Crazy. So Dirk is basically facing life right now. And yeah. Uh, kind of sad. Say, Vaughn, what was you about to say before? I, I was just going to say, yeah. based on the the alleged news that we have, and I just want to say alleged yeah. to protect ourselves, right, and, and what it is that we have. These people leave breadcrumbs in their music. Um, They blur the lines. And I, I do want to talk a little bit later about how comedians have the luxury, or they used to have the luxury of just saying, oh, I'm a, I'm comedian. a comedian. Mm-hmm. I can say whatever. Yeah. yeah. I can be racist. They still have that, no? I can be sexist. <laughs> I can be homophobic. <laughs> yeah. And I'm a comedian, right? Right. That shield um, is being exhausted. Yeah. And I think the shield of, I'm a rapper, I'm an artist, <laughs> is being exhausted. And I think this is just another example. Um, as y'all all know, like, 
my relationship and, and, and just having people that I've loved be behind bars is very sensitive to me. Mm -hmm. I'm very conscious of that. I understand that. Um, I don't wish that on anybody because it doesn't just affect the person that's behind bars, but it also affects the people that's in the real world who care about the person that's behind bars. Yep. Ecosystem. Of you know, it's, it's a whole ecosystem of when somebody is locked up in prison, mm -hmm. jail, facing time. Like it's not just the person doing time. It's also the people that love that person. That's also doing that time with them. Yeah. So I'm very conscious of how I speak on those scenarios. But when it comes to people who have resources, who have the opportunity to gain education, understanding, I do lack a little bit of empathy mm -hmm. because I look at them and I'm like, you're stupid. And so a situation like this with all the allegations against Lil Durk and then we see other rappers um, in similar situations, it's hard for me to look at them and be like, you're not stupid. Yeah. Yeah, like I'm just <clears throat> I'm just more confused of with with all of this because it's like I just don't understand did they think that they weren't going to get caught? Like I'm just I'm gen I'm not even trying to make a joke. I'm like no. genuinely like why did you guys do all of this, you know? I think um I think 50 Cent sat, sat down with million dollars worth of game and he said this. He said the thing about being gangster is you got to keep being gangster. Oh, this is the th Oh, I'm so glad you said that. Uh-huh. Uh, I love the fact that we have reached a point in life yeah. where I can look in the camera, in the mirror, at my friends, and say, I am not gangster. Fat, yo, I am not gang gang. I am not, I am not, like, <laughs> niggas is not, we I'm, are not that. We are starting to get <laughs> through the hamster wheel yeah. where that turning point is like, you For know sure. what, it is okay to be like, yo, I'm not gangster, but I am happily and willingly ready to protect myself if need be. Sure. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing wrong with saying that. And holding yourself down and holding the people that you love down in defense mm -hmm. is one of those things where I'm like, all right, cool. Let's make sure we got all of that in place. And I like how we remix in gangster now, right? Like, I like seeing a lot of the former people who were involved in criminal activity, things of that nature, grow up and realize, like, nah, being gangster is taking care of your family. Mm -hmm. Being gangster is being the the person of the household and holding everything down. I like how that that is that perception is being, you know, re -envisioned. The thing with Dirk is, right, like, I've never seen, at least when you get to a certain level of money, right, I've never seen a person be able to balance in one, uh, one foot in, one foot out. It's so hard to do. Like, when you're on the street ground level and things are getting shaken and people might be talking about you a little bit, like, you might have a little buzz in the industry, that might be a little easy to do, right? Like, for the most part, you don't feel like you've been on big stages. You don't feel like you've won awards. You don't feel like you've done really big things for people to hold you accountable for certain things. I don't know if we remember, but Dirk has really had two careers, if we want to be honest, right? This ain't what you want, Dirk, from 2012 versus All My Life, Dirk, in 2023, 2024 with J. Mm -hmm. Cole are two different careers, right? Like, Dirk was one of those people from 2012 that I didn't think was going to have a second shot mm -hmm. for another run after his first run, right? So when I see cats like Dirk, and without going into too much detail... Lil Durk has had a public feud with NBA Young Boys Camp. Mm -hmm. I think that's 4KT. All right. In this ongoing feud, unfortunately, people have died. Lil Durk is also from Chicago, drill culture, where most civilians, something happens, they might go to the police, the cops, let it go. They come from an environment where they have to retaliate. What's unfortunate is that they don't feel like even if they reach a certain dollar amount, that they're above it. They still feel like they have to retaliate. So long story short, uh, uh, a, a, a guy named uh, Quando Rondo, an mm -hmm. affiliate of uh, NBA Youngboy, I think he was signed NBA Youngboy's imprint. <clears throat> One day in Cali, long story short, his cousin ended up dying. And you know what? Let me go back just a little bit more. King Vaughn. King Vaughn, you guys might know, is one of the main affiliates of OTF, which is Dirk's imprint. And uh, very close to Lil Durk. Mm -hmm. He was shot dead a few years ago. And at the hands of an individual called Lil Tum. Lil Tum is also an affiliate of Quando Rondo. Quando Rondo being an affiliate of NBA Youngboy. So in that time, this is why the internet is so scary, right? They know Dirk to be the gangster. They know Dirk to talk about the drilling and the music like Savon was talking about. So what do the fans do? They egg you on. Mm. 
Sly for Vaughn, Sly for Vaughn. Mm -hmm. These are a lot of the comments Dirk was seeing over the years, right? I remember seeing that crazy. Sly like, for Vaughn. Like very heavily, yeah. Meaning like, yo, go retaliate because Vaughn got killed from that other side. And I'm kind of disappointed in Dirk because he let these folks trick him out of his spot. He let these folks trick him out of his position. Mm -hmm. Like I said, when you reach a certain dollar amount, you got to be above certain things. He didn't allow for that to happen. So, you know, when I see that his imprint, his conglomerate was involved into this murder for hire, mm -hmm. it's like, dude, when, did, when was you going to wake up? Brett, you got anything to say before I go? No, I'm just like, I'm listening to the situation. I really don't have many, many thoughts on this because, I, as I said, I was just confused, like, why this all transpired and what, mm -hmm. did, what did they think they were going to happen? Yeah. You know? I'm tired of the photo ops. The photo What you mean? What I mean is, yeah. if you are taking pictures, if you're in the rooms, if you have the accessibility to be with some of the elites, and, and what I mean by elites, I mean elite minds, I mean the elite businessmen, the people who have laid the blueprint out for you to kind of succeed once you get in a certain position. Right. I'm tired of seeing people take these photos and not absorbing the information of or from the person that they're in the photos with. You mean like him and Wallow? Him and anybody who is of something, who has a legit business, uh -huh. who has been able to say, you know what? Yeah. I come from the streets and now I'm going to pivot into actual legitimate business. Mm. Right. At a time over the last maybe five, however many years, we've seen certain names get held to a certain standard and potential. They always say in sports, uh, potential is the easiest way for you to get fired. Gonna Meaning prove. you could look at somebody all you want. They can have all of the, the tools, the potential to be a great scorer, to be a great player in whatever position they're in. But if that potential never manifests to the greatness that you think or believe that that person can be, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. We see it all the time, right? Yeah. For me, I always like to say, and there's a few players, and I won't say their names, but there's a few players in the NBA, in the NFL specifically, where I'm like, if they would have just stood away from pussy, <laughs> they would have been all right. If they would have just stood away from the clubs, they probably could have changed the narrative of themselves mm -hmm. and the trajectory of their careers. Right. That's how I see. It. And it goes for the same thing with rappers and hip hop artists. Yeah. Right. Like you are able to get into these rooms that you've worked yourself into. And then when you get into these rooms, you still resort to the bullshit. Or the things that you are forced to live in. You want to know what makes it worse? A lot of these individuals, and I'm going to speak specifically to Dirk now, been given a plethora of chances. Plethora. Mm -hmm. They ran in Dirk's house with his girl in there, they, and he still got out. Mm -hmm. He's been arrested before, got out. Been involved with this one, still got out. And it's like, yo, how many more chances do you need to wake up and realize, like, all right, dog, let me take a step back. Everybody's done it. Mm -hmm. We've seen the gangster of the gangster chill out. Like, you know what? Let me... Mm -hmm. Let me cool out. We didn't see Snoop in jail back in the day. What happened to Snoop though? After that, turned into a, a corporate man. Now he's a NBC correspondent at the Olympics. There we go. That's a crip at the Olympics. Yeah. <laughs> Think about that. <laughs> That's a crip at the Olympics chilling. F figured out where he wanted to take his life and completely changed it. Mm -hmm. It's like we don't have to continue these same circles, man. We're not from the south, so I don't want to pretend no. But I, I'm, I'm just at the top of my head. I'm thinking of. Some of the Southern rappers who got introduced to us through the street. I think the first person that come to mind is Jeezy. But like the street rappers from the South mm -hmm. who, or even the Midwest. Mm -hmm. because Midwest, that's Chicago. I, I don't want to just keep it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just don't mm -hmm. want to keep it regionally. Right. But I know East Coast, you know, the three pillars that we've had over the years have been Diddy, Jay-Z, and 50 Cent. Those have been yeah. the three people who New York has looked at as this is how you can evolve from hip hop into multi billionaire, multi millionaire status. Yep. Now with Diddy, we see how that has gone. We we have, unfortunately. We're seeing how that is going. Um, not going particularly well, but I will say it doesn't have to do with street shit. It seems like the 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 the, the fall of Diddy has been just ego. And think you're invincible, things of that nature. Yeah, it seems like Diddy's ego seemed to have taken him down. It wasn't necessarily that he was a street guy. 
Um, he was doing street activities allegedly, blowing up cars. I think that's pretty street. <laughs> yeah. Um, those kind of things. But it doesn't seem like the streets is what took Diddy down. Now we know Fifty Cent, obviously Fifty Cent being one of those pillars, um, associated with the streets, street culture, all of those things. But Fifty was able to use all of that and put it into marketing. Mm-hmm. He took that energy. He took those elements and said, you know what? Yes, this is how people view me. Yes, this is probably where I come from. But I'm going to be able to have the flexibility to maneuver this into a place where I can market it and monetize it. Mm. And I don't have to still be necessarily into the street. I may be affiliated. And when I say affiliated, I'm, uh, it means I may have associates who still understand the street politics and he's always like if you come from it you can never forget it no you get what i'm saying no. and that's what the 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 a lot of the guys especially in new york and again i only want to speak from a new york perspective because those are the three pillars that we've looked up to or i personally looked up to like the first music video i ever saw featured diddy um the greatest rapper that i've ever known has been biggie and jay-z between those two for the entirety of my life yeah the first half of my life, everybody told me Biggie was the greatest rapper. Second half of my life, everybody told me Jay-Z was the, the greatest rapper. Mm-hmm. So, again, <laughs> Every I New York nigga has lived the same life. And I get it. And that's what I want to talk <laughs> That's why I want to talk yeah. to a regional standpoint. Like, yeah. I don't want to act as if I can speak for anybody who didn't grow up in New York. And then, when it came to 50 Cent, he's just been this major marketing. He got shot nine times, and he went from music See? to TV to film. Like, so when it comes to the Midwest and when it comes to the South, um, I know Master P has been one of those people, uh, but outside of Master P, and forgive me, please correct me in the comments, DM mm-hmm. me, whatever you want to do. Mm-hmm. Outside of Master P, who has been the person that's pivoted from music and street culture into a different type of role, a legitimate type of role? You named a few. Um, Jeezy, Gucci Man. Oh yeah, I was gonna say Gucci. Mm-hmm. Wallow. Wallow. I, I, Wallow's from Philly. I wouldn't put him in the South. Yeah, but... Like, specifically I, from the South? To your I'm point, saying too, South and Midwest. I don't gotcha. want to just make this regional, right? To, your, to the point you made earlier, because Dirk knew a lot of these people already. And not just knew, probably ran into them, had a plethora of conversations, so it didn't really matter where they were from. He was still able to garner some information from these folks. Especially 50. I'm glad you brought up 50. I, I was watching Power not so recently on this last season. I think it was Power Book 2. And Dirk is featured on an episode. Oh, my gosh. Right? I loved his appearance. And I just it saw so 50. Funny. It was like, it looked like he couldn't even hold up the gun. Yeah, he was rapping like, up. why is the most street dude the most uncomfortable holding the gun right Yo, now? Yo, the actors look like they was more stealth than boy. But again, I rest my case. Anyway, 50 just went to the breakfast club. And he talked about how he spoke to Dirk at the filming of that thing. Like, yo, you know, is everything straight with that? Is everything cool? Is everything okay? And Dirk went into, like, you know, the situation I just brought up about how they ran into his crib in Atlanta. And he told 50, like, yo, I don't give anybody my address. And 50 telling him, like, yo, watch your circle. It's got to be something in there. Mm-hmm. If I'm Dirk and I've seen 50 who was shot literally nine times, survived. We know about his opposition. Mm-hmm. We know what he's been through over the years. This is heavily documented. There's nothing you really have to go search for. I'm going to listen to a dude like that. I am. I'm going to try to at least. So, Reggie, what you were saying was, why would you risk it? Why would you risk it? It's, 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 it's drill culture, yo. It's, you killed one of mine, we got to even the score. And unfortunately, the money is not enough for these cats. It's the perception of how they're viewed. And that's why 50 was saying, like, yo, yo, the thing about being gangsta is you got to keep being gangsta. It's true. You got to keep proving to cats that's why that you gangsta. I don't gangsta. ever want to be a gangster. I'm with you, yo. And I'm so happy that I can just say that freely now. Feel good, right? Because for so many years <laughs> in my life. To... No, no. You're so <laughs> many... I've never yeah, had yeah. to say like, it, but oh, there, there's always <laughs> been a stigma around people who didn't. Or from impoverished yeah, neighborhoods. And, 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 and I guess what it is is, you know, because a lot of us in, in black people in general in this, this country, like, we're always in proximity to the streets, right? At some level. The black doctors, the black dentists, I'm not saying that they're all street, but you can't tell me that I would say, and I would bet that 75% of anybody who is of higher education 
it's still in proximity for black Americans. It's still in proximity of the streets. And they may know somebody who's locked up or know somebody who knows somebody that's locked up. Like the six degrees of separation is a real thing in our community. Mm -hmm. So again, I'm not saying every black person goes through the same experience. We are not a monolithic people, no. right? I do want to make that clear, but it is hard to not acknowledge the fact that we all know somebody that knows somebody that's been in a compromising situation to their freedom, to their life experience, um, to the streets, all of those things. Like that's just been what I've come across yeah. in all walks of life. No matter how educated you are, no matter how shielded you are, no matter what the community that you live in, you still can be in very close proximity to somebody who is serving life in prison. That's just what it is. Or somebody who served a stint in prison or somebody who's may have to sell drugs to for survival, right? Like that's just what we've been put in, in this position. Yeah. Right. And we had a conversation not too long ago, maybe a few episodes ago about reparations and all of those things. The reparations conversation is not about black people needing or wanting or being lazy. Oh, you owe me. No, it's because we have not had the luxury of having support or a head start. And so when equal people, playing field. it's not an equal playing field, mm -hmm. right? Like mm -hmm. we don't have, a, 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 and please, Alex, correct me if I'm wrong, Pierre, correct me if I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. I do not know any black person in my life who has an inheritance. Damn, I personally don't either. You know what I'm saying? Like, I personally don't. What are we inheriting? You mean like a trust fund or something like that? Anything of that nature. Gotcha. Or a house. No, a house. I know black people that inherit homes. A boat, and and, and, sure. and, and yeah. thank God, I'm not saying like, yeah. but outside of a house, mm -hmm. which, uh, you know, which, which is almost standard in certain communities, yeah. the house is the bottom tier of an inheritance. Yeah. Right? Yeah. There's funds. There's businesses. There's properties. <laughs> there's certain things that just us as black people, it's like, wait, your parents got a boat? Yeah, that's kind of hell. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's it, 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 it's almost, well, I almost become numb to it because I, I I personally, again, keeping it on me, I don't know anybody who inherits certain things that will give them a head start. So the reparations conversation, it's not about us just saying, oh, we want money or, oh, we're old money. It's no. If you look at the landscape of certain things, we don't have the luxury or the privilege to even inherit things. No. A lot of us work and move how we move during this generation is to catch up. Mm -hmm. yeah, for sure. And to, yeah, it goes from generation to generation. So if your ancestors or the people before you never received anything to pass on, there will never be anything to pass on unless you become the change. Yeah. We're creating that. Yeah. I, was, I was just going to say that we yeah. definitely, even like the, some of the people that we know now that we have, you know, the privilege of being around who are also black. And who are also, you know, doing things that are that's generating generating income, and more than one stream of income. Yeah. Their kids will be the ones that will be inheriting everything that you know that they have coming to them now. So, my yeah, kids that's, that's are a great, so lucky. That's a great question. <laughs> Why they lucky? You a war winner? They gonna be yeah, I'm a war winner. <laughs> they gonna be lit. <laughs> they gonna be so happy. No, but yeah, it like, makes you think sad. about these things. Yeah. But my dad got it, and and <laughs> and that's the thing. Like you know, we don't really understand that, and a lot of people don't understand that. And it's crazy because we don't really talk about politics on this podcast too much. But I do want to talk about that the Trump rally a little bit later in the pod. Yeah. Um, how a lot of, excuse me, those undertones, those underlying messages that were being spewed at that rally. Um, it kind of speaks to that where, again, we, we, we were just born into a disadvantage and that's just what it is. Some of us don't make any excuses about it. We just have to get up and, and do what we got to do. But that's one of the reasons why it makes it so frustrating for me when I see yeah. people like a little Dirk and some of the people who get in these positions who have the ability to change the trajectory mm -hmm. of their life. And then it's like, Maybe, and I hate to even put it on like, oh, you didn't have the guidance. No, nigga, like, you are in a position, nigga, you are in a position. No, my fault. I couldn't say, I couldn't say the regular way. I had this remix. That's strike two. You, I love how every time you slip up and say it, you just say it twice. <laughs> he just like, double up on it. Just like, get out of it. Strike eight. You <laughs> cannot be in these positions, yeah. not realize it, and not pivot from it. And so it is really, really hard for me to empathize for anybody who just doesn't 
seize the moment. It's tough though. That's it. That's, that's what I gotta say. Like I'm looking at these mug shots and I'm like, damn, he makes amazing music. He's changed so many lives. He could have continued to change so many lives, but at some point, maybe it just didn't click. Maybe he was doing this years ago, and then by the time he realized it, yeah. it's like, oh shit, I can't get out of it. I'm in too deep. It, it may, maybe maybe I I'm don't saying. know. Like there's From, so many yeah. variables in yeah. the situation. Yeah. But it's hard for somebody who comes from nothing mm -hmm. to look at these people because it's a trend. Like Park said this on the podcast. He said, There's an entire generation, there's a entire movement of music who is being erased. Mm -hmm. We no longer yeah. have pop smoke. R. Young Pop, Doug yo. is fighting for his life, Nip. literally. Tory Lanez is no longer here. Nip. Um, Nip is no longer here. Now we got this with um Lil Durk. Like these are the the the, the quote unquote A listers of rap mm -hmm. of hip hop. Mm -hmm. Lil Durk, are you fucking kidding me? Young yeah. Dolph. Young like Dolph. Li li listen to where we're at. Like it is. It's just it's it's crazy. It's hard for me to understand. Mm -hmm. it's, it is hard it's, on. it's um so from the outside looking in to me. It's, it goes back to the whole nature versus nurture thing. Like you could be in a pretty good environment, you know, making a ton of money, but that doesn't mean that what you go through or the experiences that you've experienced in the culture that you're in or the, the, the area that you're in doesn't still have a stronghold against you mm -hmm. and against, you know, just, it just make up, makes up your whole morale and your psyche. Absolutely. Yeah, or like the values that you were raised on. Because like if people who aren't a part of the culture look at, let's say like, South Central Los Angeles and people who don't understand, they look at them like, oh, like, why is this such a thing? But it's just not something that you can just one day wake up and be like, you know what? You I go. don't want to do this anymore. Like, I'm it's so, so deeply it ingrained. Oh you, can't, you can't just like. Great point. Yeah. You can't just be like, you know, what? I gang, want, you know, yeah. Gang culture in L.A. stems generations. Yeah, it's not just something that you're like, you know what, I don't want to be a part of this, yeah. you know? like P People got uncles and aunties, moms and dads that was banging in the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, and then that goes into that generation to that generation. Unfortunately, I feel like it's pretty similar to how Dirk was raised in that Chicago area, mm -hmm. right? Like, they be beefing in between blocks in Chicago. Like, I got I got <laughs> This I gotta, person can't come to 63rd, this one can't come to 65th, 62nd. And unfortunately, even when you leave and people tout you to be this guy who's... I wouldn't say violent, but yeah, you could say violent, but they just have a different respect to you mm -hmm. because of what they think you can do. The fear that you're supposed to bring people is hard to break out of that and become a new person. So, so my question to you, Alex, how'd you get out the hood? Like, what you mean? Wait, what, no, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't put that on my mind. Don't do that. Don't do that. I think you can speak very well to like. I'll say this, right? Jokingly, I'm joking. I'm joking. I offer advice and help to people that I know who haven't got out yet right so for me is i know how to deal with people who are in that life mm -hmm. right but i also don't embody it and mm -hmm. i tell them niggas straight up hey man you know my shit legit yeah <laughs> mm -hmm. i may know you from the fourth grade homie but you know things have changed so i feel like all you could really do is similar to what wallow tries to do right like mm -hmm. he's been in these environments so let me just offer what I could, some advice to you. Not just the environment, you know, but he's been locked up. Yeah, he's, absolutely. he's done 20 years. Any smack dead in the environment. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> the fact that the clips resurface of him almost predicting that foreshadowing Young Thug's yeah. demise, um, Lil Durk's Durk. demise, like, he's crying in front of these, these men, adult men, because he's literally been on the other side and he has the opportunity, the platform the voice to talk to them in a different way. Like there's not, I don't know if there's any person with a platform with a media that can say, Hey, I did 20 years. Yeah. It's not, it's not what it's all cracked it's up. It's just not what it is. So, yeah. you know, it's sad. It is it, definitely sad. And the words don't um, be enough. But I'm, I'm conflicted. And I think the reason why, and I'm, I'm, I'm usually conflicted on things of this magnitude because I try to see both sides of everything. Yeah. Like I, I try to keep my perspective pretty open and anything that I talk about, discuss, mm -hmm. um, that I learn. I think we talked about this on the podcast a lot of times, the filter bubble, mm -hmm. um, being able to step outside of your filter bubble. Um, when it comes to politics, when it comes to entertainment, when it comes to anything, I, I always want to see the other side. That's just how I'm wired. And so for me, yes, I can see a side of damn, this guy's an idiot. Because I look at some of these artists, I look at some of these people in these positions, I'm like, oh, you're an idiot. But I can also understand, like, you know what? Maybe he just wasn't educated enough. Like, there's always two sides to it. And, and so with this little dirt shit, it is sad. Yeah. 
he is an idiot, in my opinion, if any of these allegations are true. And yeah. it's not up to us to decide what's true and what's not. Yeah. Um, but we'll 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 just wait and see. And to put a ribbon on it, some folks are just stubborn. Yeah. Where mm -hmm. they might know what exactly could happen, yeah. but they still choose to go down that lane. Yeah. Yeah. A lot going on, man. See, I don't want to be a gangster, and I know there's somebody else who Yo. he's never been a gangster, Tyler the Creator. Yeah. <laughs> he, he's Tyler. never. He's actually. What, is, like what is the opposite of gangster? Square. A, a square? A square. <laughs> you know right. what square is? Hold up. <laughs> yeah, no. No, it's not wrong with being a square, though. But see, square has just such a negative <laughs> connotation behind it, right? Like, when you think square, you think, like, yo, this person doesn't know anything. They don't know no culture. They don't know no fly shit. Reggie, close your ears. Don't say don't, it. That's going to be strike three. <laughs> so I'm going to... Go ahead. I told Reggie, I was going to... Would you... What? Would you, what? I'm not going to say it. I asked her. Permission to close your ears. No. Right, Are you gonna bleep it out? I, of course, I'm gonna bleep everything. So I why say it? <laughs> okay. right. Who's gonna listen? Tyler the Creator. Tyler the Creator, man. Chromacopia yes. is the name of his new <laughs> project. Uh, it's also slated to do 250 to 300 on mm -hmm. his first week's release. That's crazy, isn't it? Isn't it? And Reggie, I, yeah. I wanted to give a quick shout out to Tyler for setting the precedent for dropping his album on a Monday. Mm -hmm. Because how good did it feel to get an album on a Monday and to sit with it throughout the week? I, okay, we all know that the Midnight Friday drops happened because literally, it literally was Beyonce. It is credited to her. Change the word with a little drop. Like, she literally, she changed <laughs> yeah. everything. Yeah. But what it used to be in the good old days. Mm -hmm. Everything used to drop on a Tuesday because, you know, it's better for the chart cycle. And that was just, you know, the new music day was literally Tuesday for everybody across the board. Yeah. And then somehow something changed. But then Tyler now is the one to be like, hey, guys. I want to not do a Friday drop. I understand. He literally did an interview. He was like explaining his reasoning. He's like, I understand that when people drop on Fridays, now it's the weekend, everyone's distracted, and then you forget about the album. Like he had these reasonings. Yeah. And us as music lovers, we're like, this is what we've been saying this entire time, y'all. Yeah. So almost like it's a no brainer, or this should have been happened. Right? right? Like mm -hmm. we all we all agree, but I guess people are. It's just like such a system now. Mm -hmm. And he literally dropped his new album on a Monday at six a.m. That's amazing. Yeah, at the like, beginning of the week, and you can listen to it on yes. your commute. Oh, you know, you just took the words out of my on your commute, right? <laughs> yeah. Most people have jobs. <laughs> right? I would, I would hope so. I yeah. would hope no. Yeah, it's this thing on the internet that everyone just thinks like oh, we're going to talk about this today as well. I think. The influencer uh, industry is projected to do about 500 billion in the year 2027. I believe. Wow. It. Yeah. Anyway, a lot of people work and a lot of people have their own schedule. Shit, people plan their whole schedule around when we release our podcast, yeah. right? Aww. It's the same with music. So to receive a project on Monday and really sit with it throughout the week, it's way better than That's going so into the weekend when you're what you think about on Saturday, laundry, mm -hmm. uh, an outing potentially. Not bring back about no the Tuesday release. That's what Reggie was just saying. Mm -hmm. Bring them back. That's what Reggie. Just was bring just them saying. back, and yes. I'm glad because it's gonna take the people of the Tyler the Creator magnitude. Mm -hmm. It's yes. gonna take that love voice. of artists to really shift shit and shake shit up. Yes. You I know agree. what's so crazy? He dropped it on a Monday, but he didn't even drop it at midnight. And he tweeted, he was like. You guys, you guys don't have to stay up and lose sleep to wait for my album. I'm going right. to drop it at 6 a.m. I'm like, this is so, like, Thoughtful. can we not just keep doing this, please? Like, I this agree. is amazing. Thank you. I agree, like, regardless I agree. of how I feel about Tyler, the creator's music, I <laughs> Oh, shit. What you mean? You Why just, you say that? You just starting off with the hate. No, nah, keep going. Hate. I'm, 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 I, said hate. How, I said how I feel okay. about his music. <laughs> it's literally never been for me. And that is okay. It that's doesn't fine, mean yeah. that I can't that's appreciate fine. his no, genius. That's fair. That's fair. It doesn't mean that I can't appreciate appreciate his innovation. Yeah. Um, the uniqueness of how he goes about creating music. I have just never felt compelled to listen to his bodies of work. Same. Yeah. But it doesn't mean like, oh shit, he's not great because I feel that way. Everything is not for everybody. And I'm At okay all. with saying that, right? Facts. But I do understand his influence. I do understand his position in this game. I think it's really dope. I forgot who was talking about it, but I did hear somebody talk about it in the media about how the West Coast... Oh, you know what? It was Rory. I think Rory gave Tyler, the creator, a shout-out in being that he's always said... He's always represented, hey, I'm from the West. I'm from L.A. Yeah. I'm from California. But nobody ever really acknowledged him until as of late when a lot of the more trendier, a lot of the more sociably acceptable artists kind of faded out. I don't want to name names. But there's a lot of artists from the West Coast who really was on that West Coast gang gang shit. But now their music is no longer relevant. And so it's cool to herald and to kind of um, appreciate Tyler, the creator, 
in a way that he hasn't been appreciated in the past by West Coast, by the West Coast in general. Even his <laughs> earlier projects, um, Bastard and Goblin, they were more like uh, shock, shocking type of things, right? What's, mm-hmm. the, what's the term for that? Um, I think they, they were just unique. Yeah, yeah. So like outrage out, marketing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sort of, but like more like outrage marketing I don't know. a bit. I do not agree with that point at all. Mm-hmm. I feel like mm-hmm. LA has always been obsessed with Tyler the Creator because I have a lot of LA friends and like he's always been that guy. Like since we were in middle school. Yeah. I don't know if I agree with the oh we had to wait for the West Coast people so to I, fade I, out. I think it's, I want to add to this. I think it's two different things. I think the more eclectic side of LA always appreciated Tyler the Creator. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, Tyler don't come from the Hoovers, the Bloods and the Crips, right? So maybe the, on the gang gang tip, right? Like maybe fans of the game might not abreast a person like Tyler. I'm so glad you mentioned the game because yeah. I was going to say in the Mount Rushmore of the West Coast over the last 20 years, yeah. I think before this year or even the last two years, Tyler, the creator, may have not even been mentioned on that Mount Rushmore. Obviously, we really? got Kendrick... Recently? I, per, on, I, I'm here to tell you, I, I think they've been doing that. No, and he even said on this album. Yeah. I don't think that the West Coast, and again, I, I, I agree with Rory. I don't think the West Coast really appreciated him or gave him the platform or the support in saying, hey, I am the West Coast. I'm a part of the West Coast. I, and I, so, don't, I, I don't agree. I think it's more gang gang shit. Because niggas not, is conflating. Not, not just the gang gang shit, but yeah. just in general, like, we've just equated him to being. Weirdo rap, yeah. But look I, how I just look, like I don't. I'm, 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 I'm not like, accepting it. But that's no, no, no. what he's. he's Wait, but, what? but that's what I'm saying. Right. That's, but that's why I was saying more eclectic. When we've when we've thought about and named West Coast artists mm-hmm. over the last ten years, yeah, Tyler the Creator has not been categorized as he is a West Coast artist. I mean, because the West Coast symbolizes something different than what Tyler has been. And I think I just know. until recently, we've been able to look at him and say, oh, shit, he's West Coast. Because I think the climate of music is just changing. As recently as, like, 2017? I just feel like, okay, like, I feel like this is an unfair, you know, correlation to make. Because I don't think he's more popping and appreciated now because the West Coast yeah, ra- no. rappers have faded out. I think he's just making better projects in the recent years. And people are like, whoa, he's really fucking talented and, and that's why he's blowing up like i agree with that and not for nothing our future wolf gang was always embraced mm-hmm. if anything i would call them the asap mob of the west right like i just remember being people being big fans of not just him but the internet um haji frank ocean right like mm-hmm. that entire earl set of Fletcher. earl of course yeah. right like that entire set of i don't i don't know i don't agree with that but you're right when it comes to all the gang members and things like that yeah they might not spend some time to creator and i get it it's, it's a bit different but like you said, it really is some good music. As I'm listening to the album, I'm thinking to myself, I'm Wait, like... I said it was good music? I, I said it was good music. Yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't <laughs> said it. I said it. I said it. He said it. I said I understand. <laughs> I don't think I said that shit was good. Nah, that shit is good. No, yo. it's good for yeah. the people who think it's good. This guy's a podcast, <laughs> for sure. It sounds like... um, He sounds like The Roots, Kanye West, and um, forget someone else just had a baby. Mm-hmm. Like when I hear his music, the production style, you got to watch out for these artists who are artists and producers mm-hmm. because they make music that their ear picks up on. Right. Mm-hmm. When I was listening to his album, I'm like, yo, I think some of these beats would sound terrible if somebody else got on them. Mm-hmm. But that's the power of being able to create on the spot. Right. Like your ear for things is so much more different than someone else. Right. Like. If someone else got those pack of beats that he created for his album and project, we don't get the same product back. They would have done something completely different. Completely different. And I don't think I like. I would like it, I'm going to be honest with you. But he's somehow able to kind of do it and garner in a way where I'm like, yo, dog, this guy is creative as fuck. I don't know how he continues to do he's it. He's so creative. I oh, don't fuck with it. I just got it. I don't know how you can say that. He sounds like if Pharrell, The Roots, and Kanye had a baby. I agree. Even the subject matter yes. on this project, like... Not even so in such an obvious sense of like what Alex is saying. Like, obvious, I feel like a lot of people will agree with that. But even the subject matter, like the growth and like the thoughts that he's having on this album, there's yes. a lot of parallels between like 808s and Heartbreak. Like, there's so many yeah. similarities that you could draw. Yes. And I love that because I feel like even though Tyler's older than us, I kind of feel like he has a slightly younger Demo. audience for some reason. I don't know. 
And so I'm glad that that generation has Tyler to, yeah. like, do these types of things and, like, fall in love with these types of songs by him and have someone to look up to like that. Yeah. I love people who are unapologetically themselves. He's that. And that's what he is. Yeah, Despite, he's and again, when you create art, when you make art, when you draw on a blank canvas, when you put out a song, when you create a poem, yeah. when you put out a movie, write a movie, whatever it is, when you create art, you leave it for people to judge it. It is subjective to who that person is receiving the art, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the art is not going to resonate with everybody. Mm -hmm. And that is okay, right? Yeah. But I think as a consumer, it is our responsibility to judge it fairly. And even if I never get in my car and I <laughs> never put this motherfucker <laughs> on at all, I can appreciate his genius. And I think there's a lot of people who may be like, yo, who is he? Why is he? What is he? Oh, but I get who he is yeah. at the end of the day. And I'm just one of those people. Like, it's 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 not for it's never been for me though. Like I've had old either. friends who used to put me on to like the whole wave of our future and you know, like um their merch, their clothing brand, everything that they stood for, the different members. I think a great equivalent to anybody who's in our age demographic is the ASAP movement, right? Yeah. ASAP, they had their own movement. East Coast. And our future, they had their own movement. And as we see. And it's kind of ironic. I never even thought about it. But ASAP Rocky and Tyler, the creator, are like best friends now. Very close. And so to kind of see yeah. them be the leaders of those movements and still kind of exist in this world is really dope. But it doesn't mean that their music has to be for me. It doesn't mean that I have to love it in that way. I can appreciate what it is that they bring to the ecosystem of hip hop and of rap because I think what Tyler does is very unique. And again, I just appreciate anybody who says, yo, fuck you, this is who I am. Yeah, and he's a heavyweight. Like anybody who could call himself... A real N word and a bad bitch. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna get this in that. I was, like you gotta I respect. Love that line. Yeah. I respect it. Like I don't have to identify with being a bad bitch. I don't. Yeah. Like when I look <laughs> at myself in the mirror, I don't be like, oh shit. You don't I'm say a you, bad bitch. You don't say you a baddie. I don't think I'm a bad bitch. Come on, you no. need some affirmations in your life. But <laughs> the other half of what he says is, <laughs> I'm a real N word. Right. So. I got to respect that. Like, I got to respect the all-encompassing art and, of who he is. And I got to respect um, people who are willing to experiment and try new things in their sound and in their music. I feel like he's kind of spoiled because, again, he, eclectic fan base, they kind of know that he's going to go against the grain of what other hip-hop music is going to sound like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But artists like him are actually able to go down a wicked rabbit hole of, yo, let's try these sounds out, right? And... Other fan bases, I think, are just a bit more fickle, where they won't allow for their favorite artists to try some shit. Like, yeah, they'll be like, "What the fuck is this?" With Tyler, they expect it. Mm -hmm. They it's expect crazy. for they expect for each album to have a different theme. It's really crazy because right? when I went on Instagram this past week, I saw a lot of people showing a lot of love and support to this album. It's good. Yes, it, I'm like I was <laughs> yeah. genuinely surprised. Yes. I yeah. think there's a lot of people who was like, "Wait, huh? He, he, wait, hold on. Can I just? He's a heavyweight." Did you say that that surprised you? For sure. Yeah. No way. I could... just kind of feel like, Simon, you're like a little... Old. But no, 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 no. no, no I'm, not, I'm not saying that. Like, not, not at all. Like, he's older than us. Yeah. Um, <laughs> like, I mean, Tyler's older than us, not Simon, but like... Tyler's older, yeah. Like, I just feel like, do you understand, like, the magnitude of Tyler, the creator? Or like, I just don't understand why you found it very surprising that this album was like so huge. Because That's why I was like, did you say confused? Like, I want to make sure I heard you right, you know? There may be, in, again... I may not be well versed in Tyler's catalog, and I am okay with this. Like, I do want to make sure I'm being honest. We'll let you know. I'm cool with that. Yeah. I don't feel like his music is timeless. I, I will think say one thing. Huge. Wait, can I say one thing? Please. I said so me. at the pop Please. out concert, you know, Kendrick Lamar, Kendra, uh, Kendrick Ken. Lamar, Ken and, and friends. friends. Ken and friends. There we go. <laughs> Ken and friends. The pop out. People who were actually there said the loudest applause aside from Kendrick was for Tyler, the creator, when he came out and did What's Your Name and Earthquake. Like, it was the loudest applause. And so I just feel like I under I completely respect that you don't listen to his music. Like, me, I'm not going to sit here and act like I bump his music every day. But, like, I just feel like you're underestimating how crazy his, like, his reach is. Like, it is I, actually insane. To, like you, You've come in the studio and told me about how a lot of this hip-hop music is microwave music. So to argue your last statement, I would say that it is timeless because he's producing all of this, bro. Hmm. He's producing all of this, and it's not fast music. Like, when you listen to his beats and how they're structured, they have multiple layers. 
Mm-hmm. Like it's not stop. I, I don't. Sometimes I don't even know where we're gonna go. I don't even know if we're gonna continue on to this melody. And then he pivots, but it always makes sense. You know what I'm saying? He's just somebody, and and I am so okay with saying this. And yeah. I think as a society, we need to all just be okay with saying, like, I don't understand it, <laughs> but I do respect it. <laughs> no, I'm, and that's what I feel whenever I see Tyler. You're not the only one because you're not the only one. I don't understand what the pull is when it comes, like, from a musical standpoint, but every time he opens his mouth and talks into a microphone, I'm like, oh, I get it, because he just seems like he operates on a different level, on a it's different like, frequency. You want to know what it is, bro? You it's know, the, like... It's, I, the, it's the amount of creativity he dishes out. It is, right? Like, it's, it's the reason why we stand still when Kanye drops. We just know we're going to get a thematic album. We know he's going to promote it correctly. Mm-hmm. We know that there are going to be messages behind the music, right? Mm-hmm. Like... That is why they people feel something when no, I get it. That's and, what it is, yeah. and I am okay with saying that you it is not that for me. No, yeah, we're not talking about you know it. Like, yeah, 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 we want to quit. We know. I, I know there's a, a, a large population who also feels like that, just like they do with anybody who drives. Absolutely, like a Kendrick. Like there's so many people this year who I heard like say, "I don't understand why Kendrick is in this space. Why is he getting the Super Bowl? Why do people put him over Drake?" Like. I get it. Everything is not for everybody. And I think a lot of people just need to be a lot more comfortable in saying that. Now, what I will say, let's get to the numbers. Because we always say men lie, music. women lie, numbers don't. Mm-hmm. Um, we have had a rough year for hip-hop when it comes to selling units, when it comes to being on the charts, mm-hmm. when it comes to singles and all of those things. Tyler, the creator, is one of, and I'm going to put a random number out there. I'm going to say there's like eight artists that really move the needles when it comes to the charts. Yeah. Right, um, he's one of those eight. He's projected to sell two hundred and fifty thousand units in a week on a Monday release, which is crazy because if anybody knows, Billboard kind of uses a certain time frame of calculating albums, yeah, and that starts on a Friday. So had he dropped his album release on a Friday, these numbers could have been a little bit more inflated. But because he did it his way, it's only at 250,000, but 250,000 seems to be a really, really great number for this year in hip hop. So salute to him. Yeah. Like, I can say two things at the same time. That's Not phenomenal. For sure. Yeah. Right? Yeah, he, he definitely would have amassed more numbers if he dropped it earlier. You a bad bitch? On some day. Okay. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> now what? Yeah. what? Yeah, that's how you stop. Yo, that's this? how you stop a nigga. That's how you stop no, a nigga. Cause now what? That was he. Tyler said he's a <laughs> no, because I, yeah. I didn't think that you would like react. I know, like that. I know. That's how you stop a nigga. Oh, yeah, yeah, now what? <laughs> or some he's like, I, I like I am. Uh, now what? <laughs> but he did share a lot of those messages on his album, right? Like I get a person who is either found himself mm-hmm. or very close to finding his full version of himself, right? Sure, sure. Ooh, I like that you said it like that because yeah. I feel like a lot of people are grasping that, like, the theme of the album is him feeling like he's in between yes. something. Like, he really misses his... This is how I interpret it, like, because I can also relate. Like, he really misses his early 20s self-ish, mm. you know? Mm. And now I think he's 33. I could fact check that in a sec. And then now he's about to break into this other threshold of like maturity, mm-hmm. but he's kind of having a tough time with it. Yeah. So I like that you framed it like that. Did right. you say like he's about to? I think yeah, I think he's about to fully go to the version of himself that he wants to be. What version is that? Top or bottom? Both. I'm glad you said that. Oh my God, he is both. <laughs> And he's even said it on music before. Like, he goes both ways. He's also 33, by the way. He's 33. Yeah. Ooh, and on, I nailed it. And on this project, it's, I'm not going to lie, it's some really good writing and storytelling on here, man. Mm-hmm. Like, one of the favorite things I like about Tyler is, is his rap style because he's able to... Get on top and underneath the flow. Well, those ain't the talents I'm impressed by, but salute to you if that's what you like. No, you uh, said you was impressed by his I, I was ability about to, to like, I was go through the say, flow. Nah, I was going to say what I was. got to get to it. <laughs> But no, just his ability to take characters in a story and kind of relate them back to his life in a sense, right? So some quick themes I heard was, I think he wants to have children. He knows his mother is getting a bit older. That's on the song Tomorrow. That's on the song Tomorrow. I love Tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Um, And on Tomorrow, you know, it sounds like he want to have a family with some dick on his side. And on the pot, my fault. Which is okay. Like, I just hear a guy getting super vulnerable. And I want to be clear. I like introspection and vulnerability at any level. <laughs> Shit. Even when the drill... What happened? I'm being serious. PMO, right? 
Even yeah. when the what happened? <laughs> what happened? Look, I right, look. Hear me out for real, real. Even when the drill rappers right let me into their mindset of the trauma they've gone through, right? Like that's introspective. I don't think introspection should just be closeted to uh, boom bat rappers, for sure. right? Like when you think about introspective rap, what you think about Black Thought, Common, things of that nature. Tyler Quali, shout out Tyler, to Qua- shout out to Tyler, Most you know Tyler, club. shout out to him. But I don't, I don't look at introspection like that. I, I, I look at it as Anytime you're able to relate on the level of your of your humanality, right? Mm-hmm. Just what's up? You funny? You, you good? <laughs> I'm processing. <laughs> what? I'm, I'm processing. But yeah, he, sure. <laughs> he does. He shows flashes of that all over the album, and I think it's amazing because I think he's able to. You got to get an entree of pussy and a side of dick. Is that why he's on the song? A party. Pack well, is crazy. he doesn't necessarily say it. But and that's why I think mm-hmm. he's so ill, right? Because even in his sexuality, right? Like he's spoken about it in the music before. Mm-hmm. Trying to get people who are not like you to like your music or to understand where you're coming from, it has to be done in a very elaborate and packaged way. Mm-hmm. Especially when there's a lot of homophobia around. Exactly. Like let's really be clear. Thank you for like... saying it, right? So he's able to kind of do it as to where like you don't know if he's talking about himself or he's referencing himself, mm-hmm. but he's going in between ideas, right? Where he's like, yo, my mom's getting old. She wants a baby. I want to give her a baby, but hey, yo, there go Brad. Like, what happened? I'm I'm being serious. Like, <laughs> he didn't say it like that. He didn't say like, it like that. He, no, yeah. I feel like the line was pretty like... <laughs> My like it wasn't like here you go Brad. It was like yeah. my friend Brad. I think he said my friend mm-hmm. or no, I don't know. Did he actually say Brad? No, he didn't say Brad. He said like my mind. friend is having a child, mm-hmm. and I'm like, damn, I'm getting up there in age, yes. and I'm seeing all my friends grow up <laughs> without me. Like I feel like that's what the song said. It wasn't like no, you're right. Like this. <laughs> no, listen, I want to say that I'm not being funny. Like I really appreciated his messages. Mm-hmm. Even what another is message. So funny. I want to know what is so funny. <laughs> Savon is funny. No, to so Savon any... and Pierre. Like what is so funny? I want to know. I haven't said anything. I'm okay. listening to y'all <laughs> yeah. breakdown of this album. No, I'm saying like this. what is funny about what Alice is saying? <laughs> no, like... I have the privilege of seeing everyone's ISO, and I'm laughing at just what I'm seeing. <laughs> when you hear uh-huh. the cadence of Tyler, the way he raps is very boom, bat, and ding. It sounds mm-hmm. scary, right? Like sure. you wouldn't assume. That's the voice behind those lyrics, right? Mm-hmm. When you see him. So for him to go into that and get serious, man, all throughout, I, I loved it. Another thing I loved, he spoke about his mother and he spoke about his father. Mm-hmm. And he spoke about how, you know, growing up as a kid, he always assumed it was his dad who wanted to be out of the picture. And then his mom leaves a voice note on the album saying like, yo, it was never his fault. He's a good guy. It was my fault. You That's understand? crazy. And I think shit like that is ill. Mm-hmm. And she was like woven throughout the entire project. Like she, she left was. a lot of voice notes to like kind of interweave all the songs together. Yes. Like in the song that uh, Alex was talking about tomorrow, she she starts that off by saying that she wants a grandkid. Mm-hmm. And then and like him, I don't think she, I don't know if she was on the song and like him, but he was really talking about his dad and like yeah. how he's like, he doesn't know what he's searching for because his dad has been absent in his life. But he has this like, deep feeling of like I'm looking for something like I don't know there's a lot going on and it's disguised in this amazing production Mm. as to where like if you don't know who's rapping you just like yo what who who is this person what are they they going at first he didn't list the features as well at first (laughs) so you don't know who's talking so no yeah and shout out to the features on here that really flowed well Lil Wayne Tizo Touchdown Daniel Caesar Sexy Red right you like Sexy she was on there (laughs) Damn it. Yeah, that's the whole like Glorilla. Shot the Dochi. Yeah, they was all on the project. <laughs> we love Glorilla here. I love all. But you know, again, yeah. shout, shout out to Tyler. Shout, shout out to the music. Tyler, you know, you gotta digest that. How you gotta digest that? Yeah. Um, you know, shit crazy. What's crazy? <laughs> <laughs> you like introspective rap, though. I no? do. All right, let me. Nah, let's be for it though. For for it, right? Like, it's the reason why. Like, I was so big on Drake when I was in high school and college. When I first right. met you, you was a really big OVO Alex. I love that. I'm still o- OVO Alex. Can I just say I something? I just like the music. This is kind of off topic, but yeah. on my commute to work, I was listening to Care Package. Mm-hmm. I literally, I literally could cry. Like, I almost cried because I just like, I just love. He was so interesting. I, I love his music. I'm sorry. Like, I was like, I missed this. Like, I remember no. the feeling of listening to those Lucy's. Yes. And I was like, 
damn, like, bro. That's kind of what it brought me back to. Well, you know, not in terms of sexuality, anything sure. of that nature, but, you know. Drake got into his dad, his mom, yeah, his grandmother. Just telling us. Yeah, about you start his life. realizing, like, damn, yo, like, introspection is not just one way. It's not. And I think we kind of pick and choose who we want to hear that introspective perspective from. Yeah. I think Tyler is one of those people. And and again, outside of the music, outside of the art, like, I get it. Um, shout out to him for just pushing the envelope. And I think there's a lot of people in our culture who just push that. He's one of those people. And it's needed in this space. When we have the Kendricks, yeah. um, when we have the no, like the, the little Dirks, <laughs> when we have all of these people who play their role, like I always like to kind of liken it to, I don't know if y'all care about Dragon Ball Z. Love Dragon Ball Z. I, I, I watch Dragon Ball Z. I grew hate up on it. Dragon Ball Z. Love Dragon Ball Z. You got to relax. You can stay there and mute your mic. I can tell you why I hate it. But there <laughs> you good. recently, <laughs> don't worry about a, it. a Dragon Ball Z Spark and Zero <laughs> that came out and you can pick all of the characters from all of the eras, and it's like, oh You're my god! Be proud of me. I I'm, played it. You played. Wow. You're gonna be proud of me. Um, yo, I did that without a game Alex. system. Shout out! How did you play a video game without a game system? The homies. Oh, you went to the homie crib. Yeah. Oh, you yeah. had a little link up. Yeah. They Y'all had. bumped that Tyler and played Spark and Zero. <laughs> you being funny? Nah. You being funny? Nah, actually, the Tyler album didn't come out yet. Oh, okay. And I'm well, secure on myself where I could bump that with as you, you should. As you, as you should, right? As you should. Word. I'm just letting you know <laughs> the video game allows you. Yeah, it allows you switch characters to yeah play as any character as any area any you want any anybody that you want. So I think that is a very good representation of just music in general, hip hop specifically. Where it's like okay, there's different eras, there's different characters, there's different people that serve different roles, and we are able to tap into whoever it is that we want to connect with, whoever it is we want to listen to at that time. And I think Tyler, the creator, is one of the super saiyan gods. Of the lane that he's chosen to be in. You're good. You get what I'm saying? Oh, like, I do. The same way that we have the Kendricks, the Drakes, the J. Coles, the Tylers, the Futures. All of these guys are hip hop mm-hmm. and they're doing it at the highest level. And so, again, I'm always going to salute that. I'm, I'm I, like, mm-hmm. regardless, like there's certain characters on Dragon Ball Z that are super fucking powerful that I will never pick. Oh, they're too powerful? They're too strong for you. It's not my fighting <laughs> style. You get what I'm saying? Fighting like, style. He, like, <laughs> they are just not the type of characters that I'm like, yeah, yeah. like yeah. They, they are super powerful and they're great. Right. But it's like, you know what? I'm going to pick that person. Yeah. And it's just a preference. And I think everybody is entitled and, and should be allowed to have their preference in that way. But I, I, I think we'd be remiss or I'd be remiss if I didn't acknowledge his greatness. Because I do think Tyler is great. No, he is. You know what I'm saying? And, and like, I, and I, just yeah. like some people think Tony Hinchcliffe is great. And I don't know if y'all seen at Madison Square Garden at the Trump rally. We don't Ooh. talk about politics too much on this this podcast, <laughs> mm-hmm. but Kill Tony, did y'all see um, Trump? He came to New York City. I was watching, not to cut you off, I was watching the Tom Brady roast. Is this the same comedian from that? This is, yes. He yeah. did participate in the Tom Brady roast. Okay. And now this kind of leads me to a segment that I would like to introduce, which is called, I wish we had some music, the Cooked Olympics. <laughs> Break that down. I am gonna name Cute people, <laughs> and I want y'all to tell me if they are cooked. Based yeah, on the situation, define... can we def- Yeah, Jinxies. no, Same. cooked is cooked. No, no like, cooked is cooked. We no, have you got different interpretations cooked. of you got, cooked. You got, you got well done. You got medium well. You got rare. You got no fried, nigga. <laughs> okay, so fried cooked. They are fried. fried okay, like right? negative, not connotation. They are fried. fried. Got okay. you. I want y'all to tell me based on this list <laughs> if they're cooked. Got you. Based on this list. I think we can do that. In that situation. I think we can now, do Now, it's going to be quick. So we don't got to stay too long on these people, on that situation, on that person. But I just want to know. Oh, so good. we're going to start off light. We're going to start off light. Shoot, shoot. Diddy. Cooked. Is he cooked? Yes, cooked. Flame broil. He's like Flame a, broil. He's like an eight, nine on the toaster. <laughs> he has some new allegations. He did have um, some new allegations. Horrible, man. horrific allegations. Yeah. Something to do with minors. Yeah. Uh, rape. Drugs, all of these allegations are, are really terrible. A lot going on. Um, nothing about Diddy outside of the video that we've seen, and that video is fucking terrible. So just off that video, he's cooked. I don't even want to give any more backstory. He's cooked. Cool, Diddy. Yeah. Next. No, so so much. No, let me add this as well. I just watched the Chris Brown documentary. It's, you can find it on Max Show. Same. And they got into you know the whole Rihanna thing and Chris's violent background and things of that nature, all the things he's been involved in, and halfway through it. It got into Diddy. And I'm like, dog, like, 
this this ain't gonna stop. <laughs> this this documentary was supposed to be centered around Chris Brown, and somehow it became a uh, Chris Brown and Diddy Doc. But continue, Ashton Kutcher, cooked or uncooked in the freezer. Now. <laughs> let, let me you know give you some context. You know you got a lot of the thoughts. <laughs> I'm gonna give you a little bit of context. Uh, Diddy and Ashton Kutcher have a history of being friends. They party a lot. They shouldn't be friends. They've sure. been friends. They shouldn't be. I don't know. It's been documented. Yeah, probably. they shouldn't be friends. Mm-hmm. And there's been a curious case of pneumonia around them. Oh, okay. I didn't know there was a curious case around pneumonia around. Them. I, I don't want to dive too deep into it, but I will say <gasps> oh. this. Oh. oh. I didn't know that. Yep. Just just type in Diddy Ashton Kutcher and pneumonia. And then y'all would do the research on your own. But I, know about I just wanted to know if Ashton Kutcher was cooked because he's also trying to apparently, you know, buy property and different opportunities outside of the country because oh, they're saying man. things are getting close to home when it comes to Ashton Kutcher. So I don't know how much you know. I just want to know if y'all feel like he's cooked or not. I just feel like I don't know enough about, you know, okay. like people's reactions to him. Like, are people actually canceling him? So I, I don't know. Because that's not really in my algorithm, honestly. Okay. I'm not mad at that. Yeah. So he's uncooked as of today. Uncooked. I, I got him in the freezer. <laughs> All right. Ooh, we, well, can, we can also go with uncooked. He's sushi. <laughs> well, keep no, I, got, sushi. I got him in the freezer. I got to let it thaw out a little bit. Young Thug. Not cooked. Nah, he good. Not Young cooked. Thug, it's okay. He he's good. Not, it's not, not over him yet at Thug all. Thug coming home. All right. I'm not mad at that. Th- yeah. A little Lil, affirmation, yes. Lil, Lil Durk. Lil Durk. Cooked. Cooked, yeah. <laughs> we just talked about him for 30 minutes of why. And I want to reiterate, he is booked on a murder for hire. So if he is found guilty, that gives you a sentence of either 20 years to life. To life. Yeah. <laughs> Tom Brady. Oh, I, oh, shit. One of my goals. He's not a coach. He's going to be fine. This past year. Oh. No matter what fellas, happens to Tom Brady, he's going to be fine. Fellas, uh, I don't know how many of y'all have damn. been in serious relationships. I don't know how many of y'all have built a legacy with the woman that you deem to be the mother of your children. Somebody that is associated with your name and likeness. Oh, shit. This last week, she was reported to be pregnant by another man. Damn. Now, granted, they are divorced, but it seems, and again, this is my man ego, my, my, my man <laughs> ego, like if I had an ex I was with for that long and she just became pregnant, yeah, I feel like I would be cooked. Because nah, nah, you got to look cooked. at her and go, yo, you wasn't happy with the kids we made? I get That's you. how you got to look at her like, yo, we got teenagers now, ma, you, you went and got a, got a new man and, and shacked up and, and brought another one? Yeah, 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 that hurts. Yeah, that's, a, that's pain. That's a tough oh, situation. Oh, because he didn't want to quit football. Is Tom that's Brady crazy. cooked? He's cooked. I don't think, I don't think he'll so. be fine. Nah, he's cooked. He'll always be Tom Brady, you know? Yeah. Nah. Meg the Stallion. Mm. Huh. Why would she be cooked? Mm. I like where this is going. I don't think she's cooked. Okay. Huh? Not even with the recent, her recent no, dropping. Be, whatever is coming out with her and Tori. Nah, not what, I wasn't going to oh, get there yet. Oh, oh, so what you mean? I'm talking about her numbers. What, what happened with her numbers? Her Apparently, number, her, her, she undersold. Okay. The projections that she was supposed to hit with her recent album, undersold. Okay. Um, and then also the update with Tory Lanez. I just wanted to know if there's a combination. And it doesn't, like, we I don't, don't have to say yeah, yeah or nay. Like, I mean, we do have to say yeah or nay, but no, we, no, it yeah. doesn't mean she's cooked because I'm asking. I'm just no, asking, no, no. is she cooked? Yeah, no, I was, I was thinking out loud. I, I don't think she's cooked because she still has a budget and backing behind her. Okay. A lot of the times I say people cook, they don't got nothing behind them. She does. Yeah, I don't think she's cooked either. Yeah. She's great. Yeah. Um, dating in 2024. Oh, brother. Cooked. Steamed. <laughs> fried. There will always be smoked. Good, your your <laughs> perfect match is out there, guys. Don't give up. It's not cooked. Romance will always be alive. Hey. It's not cooked. It's cooked like how you cook uh smoked rib. That shit is slow cooked slow cooked exactly you get it hey you so that's a good it. thing people aren't perfect but love slow. is All people right? aren't perfect but, but love, love is. is that was cute <laughs> <laughs> that was real He's fucking you are <laughs> <pure sayings. laughs> nah you gotta you gotta find out who you gotta redefine what who and what love is see happy people always say bullshit like this to us on happy people <laughs> Oh, yeah, because we see the it's other gonna side. It's going to figure itself out. You're and we find, know that it exists. You're going to find your one and only. And I just also don't want to perpetuate the 
the idea because i feel like everyone is saying that dating sucks and i understand the dating pool is crazy right now but we have to lead with positivity guys and you know what you got to do you got to be who you want to attract so if you're an asshole you're gonna meet an asshole i'm not gonna lie y'all people in happy relationships always know the best things to say like y'all gotta be so what are you gonna what are you gonna do the dating pool is Mm -hmm. cooking what what are you gonna do you're just gonna gonna roll over and just deal Mm -hmm. with it or are you gonna put your best foot forward alex (laughs) i'm gonna keep cooking reg (laughs) i'm gonna keep cooking I'm gonna keep on cooking. No sous chef, but master, I'm master chef. There you go. Chef. There you go. <laughs> what else we got? The New York Yankees. <gasps> oh my God! Shouldn't we know? Wait, what? at the time of this recording. At the time, yeah. At the time, time of this know? recording, these niggas is cool. Wait, should we check the score? No, you it's don't want to check. No, check the score. Let's check the score, the score right now. Because the, the Yankees are currently playing right now, and they the the Dodgers are one game away. And then, setting them packing. But certainly, last but not least, I do want to talk about us being cooked. <laughs> Why will we be cooked, Savon? Because AI has these things where oh they God. are able to read us. The Yankees are up. Can so. you break that down? Are the Yankees of winning? Yeah, four, four to five. Four. That's, that's too close. close. That's, that's close. Too close. That's so they're part of a fighting They chance. still may be cooked. That's too close. Yeah, I think I did a lot. Oh, shit. I forgot to mention, we dropped our audio on Wednesday last week. I don't know if we're going to drop it again on Wednesday this week, but that that could be something we experiment with. So shout out to anybody. It, People was tapped in on Wednesday. You don't think so? The nigga said it fucked up their commute and the schedule. Really? Because, you know, that? some really big pods released that day. But the silent mm. listeners appreciate the Wednesday release. Shout yeah, out to they the listen to it. Yeah. Yeah. It's only the vote. Only people who hate are vocal. <laughs> what? Yeah, but the people who are like <laughs> love true. what we're doing, they just calmly true. listen, you know? Salute to all y'all. Man. Yeah, salute to everybody. Yeah. Um, but just going back to me and Cook, AI, there's been, I don't know oh, if y'all saw okay. this trend on, <laughs> on Twitter, but there's an app who will audit your Instagram or your Twitter or your TikTok page based on just your handle, just on your at name. Yo. And so I came across this and I'm like, you know what? What better way to really get to know myself than letting AI, AI tell me who I am? Come on, man. So I sent it to my friends. Hello. Because y'all are my people. Y'all are my guys. Y'all are my ladies. Hello. I had to do this. So there, there, there's this program on, there's this trend, I should say, on Twitter, where you type in your name on Instagram. They audit you within about 30, 45 seconds. They did quick. And they give you a summary of who you are. They give you mm-hmm. emojis. They give you names. They give you a description of you. Yeah, I want us to determine. I want us to react to how AI views us based on our social media trends, tendencies, tweets, history. I want to go out and say this first: this AI shit getting scary, y'all. <laughs> Facts. I'm trying to tell y'all some. It's not gonna stop with the our robots that Elon got coming. But okay, it's who wants weird. to start? Who wants to begin? I can start if you want. Let me Let's do it. Shit. Let me hear you, Shippy. All right. So this first one, <clears throat> it says, Pierre, you are impressive. You are an impressive personality, known for your photography and interesting podcasts. Mm-hmm. Your energy and creative, your energy and creativity. I can't read. Make you special, but sometimes you need to take a little time out for introspection. Yo, you, you relax. All right. Damn. So you got to relax. So this you need to listen one. to some Todd the Creator. Uh, I'm not yeah, gonna like you. So you said you need some introspection. Expand your horizons. <laughs> you may need to expand your horizons. Need some introspection in your life, huh? From what this is saying, but this don't. This doesn't know me though, so I'm taking this with a grain of salt. <laughs> <laughs> Alex and Reggie, did y'all pull y'all's up? Mm-hmm. Yeah, in fact, I got it over here, man. So it kind of had different brackets, right? Like one was um, the roast, where they're frying you up. And then what they think highly of you. Mm-hmm. You want us to go with the rose first? I feel like we should all start with the, with the rose because that was like the main paragraph. Yeah, you know? let's go with the oh, rose. Oh, okay. That's not the one I read. But yeah, go ahead. All right. Who's going first? Listen, save on Slater with a V because I put a little V in my <laughs> shit. You know what I'm saying? I make it cool. Capital <laughs> Aesthetics. You get Capital what I'm saying? V, yeah. Your Instagram is the perfect blend of self-importance and pretentious humility. Congratulating yourself for every minor achievement while acting like you discovered fire. Oh my god. Let's, let's talk about your bio. Damn. Socially antisocial. How about just what socially awkward? You throw around names That's like confetti nice. as if tagging all of those big egos on your post will magically elevate your status to Actual celebrity. You can't. Hey, I was a bully. You want gratitude. 
is probably coming from people who feel sorry for you and your sad attempts to look effortlessly chill in those overly staged dumps that are dumps. Oh, damn. And let's not begin with your harmonious blend of purple and cringe. Do you want to rain? Or are you just trying to be the royal jester over here? What the fuck is going on? Yo, they kind of ate you up, not going to lie. Yo, what the fuck going on? What that you mean? Is... Mine does not look what like that. What did you do to AR? That's the ropes to save on. What did you do to the Hold AR? Hold on, can I just... Nah, that was old. Yeah, Wait, yeah, I wrong. didn't expect it to be that mean. Mine was not mean at y'all all. Y'all didn't get a roast? No, I got I a roast. I did. Look, you I can got read a roast. Like, yeah. I mean, I want y'all to read y'all. Okay, yeah. Reggie, you want to go? No, let's <laughs> analyze Savon's. No. <laughs> I bet. So, this, uh, this is news to me <laughs> that Damn. your bio is socially antisocial. It is. What Tumblr page did you get that off of from that 2015? Was front, bro. That was mad cliche, yeah, y'all. Yeah, low key. Really? That's a very like outdated phrase. Socially antisocial. I never heard it until I did it. <laughs> Save on. If I'm being honest. You go on Tumblr right now. Fine. I'll delete it today. <laughs> what? See, why is that your bio? Because I feel like that describes me. Like, I'm really not that social. <laughs> it's giving like, I mean, it's not like a bad, you know, phrase, but it's Ugh. just, to me, I just see that as like, live, laugh, love. Like, yes. it's AM. like that to me. That's like, the dude one. All right, so that's the dude one. I'm going to delete that today. <laughs> what else? Please, please. What else do you want to give it a breakdown? Of? <laughs> no, how did, no, not us. I'm done with that. How did you, you feel? Yeah, yes, I was about I was to ask. ask yeah. Facts, yeah, yeah. I feel like it humbles me. <laughs> you, <laughs> you, I feel humbled. Facts. I feel humbled. Really? Humbled the fuck out of yeah. You would only feel humbled if like you kind of read that and you're like, okay, you know what? You're kind of right. I think there's a little bit of truth in it. <gasps> but why do they know our truths? What's up? It's with a little that? bit of truth. I can be honest in it because I think if I have to be honest and say, "Oh shit," all of the good things that AI said about me is true, then I got to be able to look at this and be like, "You know what? There's some type of mirror here right. where maybe I do think a little bit more highly of myself than I probably should." Yeah, I don't agree. I think you should think very, very highly of yourself. You should think the highest of yourself than anybody in the universe. Yeah, until it gets pretentious. Yeah, <laughs> I think Savon should think highly of himself. No, I mean, for sure. He already does. No, trust me. You're a great person. You've accomplished a lot. Of course, you you should think highly of yourself. Yeah, that's a fact. Fuck chat GPT. Fuck AI. So that's the roast. But then we can't get to the good, but I want to hear y'all bad before I get to my... Yeah, let's go in, like, cycles. Ladies first. Well, I mean, I hate to break it to you. The reason why (laughs) I was so shocked that yours was because mine was not... Crazy. Bad. Look, okay, I'm reading no, roast. roast. Your roast was not bad. Roast to Regina. I'm literally reading it. I'm not making Yo, this up. This girl is perfect. Girl. Everything <clears throat> loves her. <clears throat> what the fuck? Listen, Regina, your resume is so impressive. It makes the Oxford Dictionary look like a post-it note. <laughs> I mean, what kind of sorcery allows someone to go from couch potato to the VMAs to rubbing elbows with stars? Wow. We'd prefer to see a clip of you pulling a hundred grand out, <laughs> a little insider, what out of your fuck? pocket. Why does AI know It's not that? like a grandpa's heart attack was worth a VMA award, right? And that's just an insider between like the Jack, whatever, I'll keep going. Your highlights read like a typical Hollywood fairy tale, but let's be real. It takes a lot of networking to land in the same room as Rihanna. You're giving major bring the snacks to the party, but I eat them before I arrive energy. You've got so much sparkle that if you were any more glam, you need a flammable warning label. That's not a roast. That's it. Like that was. <laughs> That's not a roast. That's mad love. Like. What? <laughs> why nah, am I so, Why am I so boring? Nah, I'm mad. That's not a roast. Now nah, you're doing the internal work on your life without therapy. Facts. <laughs> because the AI was supposed to find the little shit in there. The crevices. The crevices. Oh, that's I'm confused. Yeah, like how the did fuck? how did AI get that from Savon's Instagram though? I don't know. I just typed in my Instagram and that's what, what it gave. What the fuck, Alex? What does your say? You you put your seatbelt on, buddy. Dude. First of all, the nigga started off with dude. Dude, yeah, that's crazy. I'm oh. saying here like, yo, what happened? That was racial. What did I do to you? What did I do to son? Look. Facts. Dude, what can I say? You look like you've Huh? <laughs> you look like you've brought in the enhancement of weirdos on social media. What the fuck does that mean? This is mean. When you like dive it. into your podcast, I swear you can't even hear yourself. Your style has so much of self-importance. That it's impossible for anyone to break up in a TikTok video? Huh? This makes no sense. Damn. And that you need to be heard. They did that in quotes. I think they took that from like Need to Know Podcast. Okay. <laughs> need to be heard. You talk about, like, oh, this is true. I swear I'm not misreading this. This is literally how they type it. It's just like jumbled. Yeah. yeah. Perhaps you can't even hear it yourself. What the, what that's the it. Fuck? That's, that's it. it. That's it. You need to be heard, but you can't hear it yourself. 
I don't oh, know. No. And so you talk I, too much. That that sounds right. That's what it sounds that like. Sounds you need right. to be heard, but you can't hear myself. Understand. All right. Well, I'm, I'm sorry, AI. I'm I'm gonna continue to hear myself. Do you have like the overview of what you're wait, 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 with I, the emojis? I gotta, I gotta reread my emojis. my roast. Yes. Real quick, let's get yeah, to yeah, the, yeah. the emojis really quick. I do have because the there's another paragraph emojis? with the emojis. At the very yes. top, at I the think top. it's the first one. Yeah, we should leave this link for them somewhere. Oh yeah, yeah maybe yeah. in the Let's description. The oh, that'd be funny. Yeah, that would be dope. Maybe every, in the description. Everybody yeah. that can, you okay, know, don't who, X out of it. Who wants to engage? <laughs> yeah, we'll make sure we'll leave this link. You type in whatever right. your social handle is, and then it'll give you this kind of yeah like, assessment of who you are based on your social media. Absolutely. You want to go least, first? Is this one at least good? I didn't read it. I just typed my name in, and I'm gonna read it right now. So here we okay. go. Ah, save on the socially anti-social enigma of NYC. See, they still being shady. It's okay. still being shady. I don't Yo, like that. Come on, son. It's still being Yo, shady. Come on, son. I don't like that. I'm fighting for you. A creator who <laughs> reveals in the spotlight yet shies away from the crowd. Oh. You juggle mics and moments with finesse. But let's be real. Your comfort zone is probably a cozy pod rather than a packed room. <laughs> Blessed with charisma, you navigate through chaos without breaking a sweat. Just remember. While capturing everyone's attention, their ears might be tuned to someone else's hype. Oh. Embrace the spotlight, but don't forget to turn it back on yourself every once in a while. Mm. Nah, I'm See, not, that was a little better. Nah, it's still being shady as fuck. I'm not gonna lie, that was supposed to be the good thing. They, they were right about, you know, his comfort is on a behind a podcast a pod. mic. Okay. Yeah. That's calm. I don't know. Okay. Wow. Did you like that one? I don't give a fuck. <laughs> okay, that's good. So you said fuck the AI. I like that you don't care about it because yeah. we should not take this to heart. Just so mine. <clears throat> oh, she's amazing and perfect. It's AI. That's <laughs> AI. <laughs> yo, that's Dude, crazy. She's Here Ill. Here's the proof. I'm not making this up. But she's really Ill, yo. Yeah. Regina is a radiant star. You see? You see? <laughs> Oscillating between the realms of glamour and a grounded sense of self. O oscillating. Her journey. Oh, no. her, excuse me. Her, <laughs> her journey from Yerba quotes to the red carpet showcases her ambition and heart, proving she's destined for the spotlight as she shines through life challenges and celebrations alike. When it comes to capturing moments, she's like a bard. I don't know what that means. A bard turned broadcast journalist, effortlessly merging creativity and her undeniable charisma. You and AI get along, huh? Facts. <laughs> I did not know about the site before Savon texted us a link before we started recording. That's crazy. Mad love. I don't know why it likes me so much. What was your emojis? Perfect. I'm curious. Who are your emojis? It's a mic, <laughs> okay. a sparkle, a uh, champagne glass, a lipstick, and a camera. Savon? Um, I got the Statue of Liberty, <laughs> <laughs> a microphone, a upside down smiley face, <laughs> a purple heart, and a rocket. <laughs> The fuck is the rocket this about? is not <laughs> this is not representing oh, that's what I got that's oh, what I got so those are your emojis man you gotta yeah. start using them <laughs> go <laughs> hey, okay. Okay, over this. Um, <laughs> your future is currently filled with possibilities and positivity you speak with confidence oh, wow. and have the ability to turn every challenge into an opportunity I like that hmm. your sensitivity and creativity set you apart from the crowd you are very steadfast in your intentions. You attract people to you like a magnet. Aww. That's good, man. <laughs> it's kind of what? It's kind of what is Ron save on social media that they would make them think this? What did you do? Like, I'm just curious. Like, he doesn't really oh. post that crazy. You know, like, what did you do, son? Yo, Pete, go real quick. Yeah, uh, I'm. I'm also interested. I wonder if if it factors in how often each of you post. Because I know Reggie posts more. Definitely. Alex, you don't really. I mean, you post on Fridays with with the uh, your, yeah, your list, I post that one and Savon only drops when like cool things happen to him in his life. <laughs> um, but yeah, so my roast is it says, "Hey Pierre, how you doing?" At least it, <laughs> at least it cares, right? That just made me laugh. So it said your name. The facts. It says you think you're a big artist, but uh, but when there's no post on Instagram, your photography looks so sickly. <laughs> it shot it shot at us here. It says your passion for podcasting is like a white lion. Everyone hears it, but no one really sees it. That's tough. Uh, maybe your followers have fainted when you fail to notice the lack of visuals in your art. You're an NFL fan, but your art, but your sports analysis isn't really that relevant. Uh, uh, sorry, isn't really that relevant, right? And it says, to be honest, Re relevant or relevant? Relevant. Hey, that shit go. fucked him up so much. <laughs> nah, Pierre, it's okay. Pierre, I it's never okay. Heard of relevant. Nah, it's like, tear your ass up so much. Nah, that's crazy. And then it says, uh, it says, oh. Uh, and just to think your identity as an NFL person doesn't 
necessarily mean your football knowledge is is an exceptional is as exceptional as you believe. So it, it's it's basically calling me stupid. <laughs> Yeah. And Pierre, I feel like this is genuinely offending him. OD, like, talking about I don't know my sport. Kick no, rocks. It Pierre, happens. it's a robot. It's okay. You're a Why? sports expert. So the, the, there's one last what? area that I do want us to read. Yeah. It's called the other perspective. Did I get that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I at the bottom. Okay. Yeah. At the very bottom of this experiment, it's called the other perspective. Yeah. Do y'all want to go further? I feel like I've been getting, like, fried. So the other perspective should be good for you. I don't know. <laughs> but I'll start. I'll kick it off. You want to kick and it off? We'll go from there. All right, go. Sounds good? Mm -hmm. All right, cool. The other perspective on this particular AI program, whatever you want to call it. Savon, others perceive you as a bright light, engaging, star woven into the vibrant tapestry of the NYC nightlife. Come on. Tapestry. <laughs> Why is, it, why is the mayor obsessed with you being an like, NYC mayor? Like, they said you a bottle girl. I don't know. I don't. I don't even. The shit called you a bottle girl. Okay. What the fuck is going on? The universe whispers that you are both a magnet for attention and a safe haven for heartfelt discussions. Come on. They see you as a paradox wrapped in an enigma, an extroverted introvert who thrives among the noise but seeks solace in selective connections. That's real. Balance, dear, is your cosmic quest. Let it guide you in this chaotic journey of life. Now, Amen. now I want to give you some flowers and say fuck you to the AI. Because how they going to talk <laughs> exactly. about your bio and then say you're an extroverted I, introvert? I, 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 I was going to like the same thing. Because that's his next bio. <laughs> <laughs> you know, man, I got to clean fuck? up my social media. <laughs> Clearly. But you Roll don't even post anything crazy. I feel like I don't. You I don't. Like you very, don't. Like, son, you're me. very like straightforward. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll just give you whatever. Maybe I just gotta go they do gotta, some things. Up. They gotta see your close friends. <laughs> 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 yeah. Do they see our stories? Maybe. <laughs> yeah, they yeah. had to. Cause you know you can archive your stories just like you can a post. I don't even have close friends, bro. Say more. Right. Shut up. I don't have a close friends. All right. You do. No, I don't. You I do. swear. I, I saw it. Okay, I have it, but I haven't used it in like three years. But you have it. But I don't use it. You do. No, I, I swear you to God. You took me out of it. On everything I love. <laughs> you I took me out your close I friends. I swear on everything I love. Your close friends <sighs> is comprised of your type. That's crazy. I'm not your type. That's great. <laughs> I pro on everything I love, bro, I haven't used a close friends feature in like three years. I'm not your type. You're not in there. I know. Oh, that's no, why I'm type. not in there. Nobody's in there. I don't because use it. There is somebody in there. I don't use the close friends feature. It. Yes, I, don't lie to me. I have a okay. You know what? You want to know when I stopped using it? When I asked y'all, I came to y'all with my co-host. I was like, "How many people are you supposed to have on your close friends list?" And how many you said? Three fifty. <laughs> oh, I remember this. And then I stopped no, using no, it. Because, and then I was like, "Alex, that's not how you use close friends." <laughs> that's when I stopped using it because like, I'm putting everybody in your close friends. Reggie, that's when I realized I either want to show everybody or no one at all. I don't use it. You got 350 in close friends? Yes. Well, okay. I haven't touched it since. Brady, what you got? Like eight? I have a very uh, small eight group. Eight people? <laughs> How many? Like less than 30. Less than 30? That's mm -hmm. fire. Oh, we made the cut? Well, yeah, we hey, made the cut. We, we be seeing yeah. that green. Yeah. I don't know. Do we? Yeah. Do yeah. I see that? You definitely do. She might have kicked me out. Nah, you see it. I ain't see the green in a minute. Nah. Well, I haven't posted a lot of my close friends, you but see you've seen my close friends recently. Seen I have. Okay. You All right. Her. And I think I'm in the middle. Oh, yeah. That's right. You was extreme. Yeah. She was like a minimalist, and I was like kind of in the middle. Yeah. How about like, you know, that number? <laughs> Why are you being shy? Don't so incriminate sick. yourself. Hey, hey. Nah, I told them. Nah, because how I'm many in the people? middle? Nah, how many people? You said 350. Huh? She said 20. Oh, I yeah. said I'm in the middle. I think that's a great That could be like 200. Over 50? Over 50? Yes, over 50. Damn. And was mad at me for He's 350. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I got a good balance of y'all. I'm going to balance that's true. Oh. I feel like that's how you should use it. For sure. Yeah. <sighs> Reggie, what's your other perspective? I don't know. These are kind of boring. They're very, like, generic. The hey, universe... girl, you a baddie. Oh, shit, girl. Yeah, I see that head. You got the ombre going with the kid. <laughs> and I already know what your makeup be doing and shit. Let, let, you be let banging me read all only the first sentence. And you, I'll, like, this is corny. Like, the universe views Regina as a luminous comet streaking through the cosmos, leaving trails of her energy and charisma that captivate everybody in her wake. Like, do I, I need mean, to read the rest? You know, like. I mean, it's kind of ill. It's just cool. very, like. Like, general, uh, those in her gravitational pull sense her ambition combined with her sweetness and draws them in. And it's just, like, another sentence of that. I'm okay. over it. <laughs> you, you, you do be pulling shit. Type, type shit. 
<laughs> nah, for real. I'll take it as a compliment. That is a compliment. That is a compliment. Yeah. Alex, is yours interesting or? Oh, uh, shit. Let's read it. <laughs> Everyone hates this now. People see you as someone dreamy with colorful ideas. See, I don't even like that. Colorful. Niggas don't look at me as dreamy. <laughs> that's a good thing. Yeah, all right. That's, <laughs> that's how your DM get bad. <laughs> Okay. They see you as dreamy <laughs> with colorful ideas. Yeah. The universe perceives you as an astrologist connecting the stars with new smooth songs and beats. Okay. I do like to make R and B. Oh, that was relevant. Okay. Your unique thinking and sense of humor are hidden in this message, like a blend of some wonders in the truth of the sky. Huh? Oh. Poetic. Oh. Real poetic. This shit got poetic on me. I think it's trying to bag me. I think so too. <laughs> Yeah, not the AI trying to bag you. Copy. My initials is AI. Oh, <laughs> I never thought about that. <laughs> Your initials are really AI. Yes, they are. You might have been like the blueprint for this whole thing. That's why it's so smooth. <laughs> that's, See, that's, that, that's why it caters to like, you know, what people know and, and all of those things. That's crazy. I didn't think about that. Yeah, man. I yeah. had no idea. It's us. It's you. <laughs> clearly AI. <laughs> it is clearly you when it's it comes to that. You know, the, the, the opposition. Did y'all, real quick, before we get up out of here, yeah. um, I don't know what y'all listen to in your spare time, but for me, I like to listen to different interviews. I'm one of these people. So there's been a thing. I don't know if y'all saw this on Twitter, Instagram, whatever, mm -hmm. but apparently only men watch YouTube. Now, <laughs> oh, shoot. ladies, before y'all like <laughs> come at me, I'm not making this up, but they say that women gravitate towards TikToks, um, Instagram, Netflix, oh. Reels, those kind of things. They say that men actually sit there and watch YouTube. It, where Where is this statistic from? It stems from, and I don't think it's a statistic. I think it's just like the sexist thing. But listen to where it came from. So they say men will watch a basketball game. Then they will watch the highlights of that basketball game. Yes. And then they'll watch a podcast of the highlights and the game that they just watched. The so on YouTube, yep. right? Like, and, so and, YouTube like. is out, like, that's our thing. And I get it. I'm a victim of it. I Same. am a YouTube quote unquote baby. I, I watch YouTube a lot. Yeah. So whatever, I subscribe to that. I get that. I've been on YouTube quite a lot lately. And I do really want anybody who is tapped into sports, who just cares about like um, interviews in general. Mm -hmm. Skip Bayless was interviewed on a podcast, Dan Lebatard. Oh, Danny. I know Skip Bayless is somebody who was very polarizing. <laughs> no, I'm a boy. Danny. No, no, he was like, oh, he was like, Danny. oh, Danny. Yeah, Dan <laughs> Lebatard. That made me laugh. Yeah, he's, they let him go from ESPN. Oh, yeah, Danny. They let him go. <laughs> he's highly opinionated. Highly op opinionated. Yes, yes. And I know Skip Bayless, he's very polarizing. But anybody who may not understand Skip, and I feel like this is one of the purest forms of just interviewing, mm -hmm. because over the last week or two, we've talking about, or we've spoken about, um, just hip-hop journalism in general, and hip-hop media. And I feel like sports does a really great job of interviewing when it's done correctly, of covering each other when it comes to personality on personalities. Like Dan Lebertard and Skip Bayless are colleagues to a degree. Yeah, now peers, Skip Bayless, sure. yeah, they're peers, mm -hmm. right? Skip mm -hmm. Bayless, he started, and I love the fact that Dan gave Skip his credit in the interview, but he is older and he comes from a different generation. So I do want to implore anybody who cares about like the purest form of interviewing. I'm not going to say journalism, but from an interview style, from this piece of content, I think if you care about sports media, um, if you care about the breakup between Shannon and Skip, uh, between Stephen A. and Skip Bayless, it's a really good interview. Check that out. And I also, I know y'all hate when I do this, but I'm really conflicted. I may be conflicted until the day that I die when it comes to Vlad. DJ Vlad, he gets these interviews, he gets these people he gets them in an environment, and I, I, I know for a fact he does pay people. Yeah. So maybe when you pay somebody, they're willing to open up a little bit more. But when it came to his interview with Torre, um, who is a hip-hop journalist, hip-hop uh, media personality, and, mm -hmm. and just somebody who's covered the culture over the years, he interviewed with Torre. Um, I thought that regardless of the content, it was just a phenomenal interview. I think... Torre challenged Vlad in a way that I don't see a lot of his guests challenge him. And I just thought it was really dope. So I just wanted to give a, a quick Fire. spotlight on those two interviews. For anybody, all of my guys, all of the fellas that are YouTube babies with me, please go check out those interviews. I think it's really dope. I think you can learn something from it. 
Um, and I do like to see the interviewee be challenged in the way that Torre challenged Vlad because I think Vlad can be very pretentious and unaware and not really see himself and not really understand culture and just people. And Torre yeah. put on a masterclass of how to challenge someone while being, you know, just peaceful. That's fire. I'm gonna check that out now. Vlad definitely needs that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> also, uh, the Wayne's brothers looks like they're about to reboot the scary movie series. Mm -hmm. I'm super excited. I'm on the lookout for that. Um, you'll be on the lookout for that as well. Um, yeah, it's just good to see the Wayne's back in it, back in the circuit. Damon Wayne's and his son have a new show out. I caught some of it. It's actually pretty good. Um, I love it. I, I super love it. Shout out to Wayne's family. Uh, yeah. Well, I'm going to slide this in there for the last five minutes. Speaking of movies, the, the, the listeners have seemed to like the Blindly Ranked the Five segment that we did. I think they liked it. We're going to do this rapid fire style. Let's do it. Because our social guy is going to kill us if we don't. So, <laughs> okay. So, I'm going to give you guys five, five things. I can't reveal what it is yet. And you guys blindly rank based on knowing what is not going to, based on not knowing what is going to come next. Okay. Let's do it. <laughs> All right, bet. <laughs> okay, I'm so excited. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> Blindly rank these classic black movies. <laughs> okay, so. <sighs> and this is hard for me to do because I know these guys, these guys' favorite movies. <laughs> you might be surprised today. Okay. You never know. The first one. And sorry, Pierre, we would include you in this, but I feel like with three people, it gets locked. Nah, it's all good. I don't matter. Go ahead. Your commentary is more than welcome. All right, bet, bet, bet. Okay, one through five. Training day. Mm. Ooh, wee. <laughs> you starting out with training day? Oh, number Ooh. two. Yeah. Ah, fuck. I was going to go two, two. I'm bro. giving training day. Don't let that stop you. I'm giving training day. I'm going to go two. I'm going to go two. That's a good training day, number two. I got to go two. Okay. Hmm. Where should I go next? Okay, fuck it. I'll throw this in there. The most important movie of my entire life. Sunny sold us out. You got served. Ooh. I'm gonna give that a great five. Save on! I'm <laughs> I, no, wait. No, I, so every time I've talked about the movie, <laughs> you didn't, you didn't, you didn't bother to tell me that no, you hated it. No, no, I didn't hate it. I ranked it. He like, yo, that's a mid. But, but wait, I, could, I never knew this. But I, I could go the rest of my oh. life without watching you guys serve oh, and be shit. okay. I literally watch this shit like once a month. <laughs> <laughs> that's good to know. Uh, I'll go for it. Oh, because I don't know what you got coming. When you came out with training day like that, yeah, training day yeah. got me on my toes right now. That was right a strong now. one. I'll go four. You got served. You got served number five. I'll go four. I didn't know you hated <laughs> I love it. Elgin Eugene Smith the third that much. Um <laughs> The Royal Penis is clean, Your Highness. Oh. Coming to America. Number one. Number one. Classic. You know, I'm not my favorite movie of all time, actually. That's a little biased. Yeah. Yo. And it is. Yo. It is. <laughs> Yeah, Alex, that's biased. That's crazy. What's wrong with that? <laughs> I didn't say nothing's wrong. Nothing is wrong with that. I get why you just went straight to number and, one. And no. That's racist. So bro. I'm going to be using it. That's racist. That's my movie. That's racist. That's my guy. I'm going to give it a number three. Okay. Because I'm, I'm excited. Like, I, I want to hold on to number one for something that really feel like, oh, shit. Okay. Like, training day was that for me, but I'm going gotcha. to give Coming to America number three. And please remember which one, which slot to use because I can't remember. No, it's fine. I remember. <laughs> So we did Coming to America, you guys started training day. <clears throat> and I like to mix up the genres, mix up the eras. You know, Coming to America was very old. And then, you know, the next one, I'm going to go Love and Basketball. Mm. Mm. Number four. You hate I'm, love? I'm That's not. <laughs> And basketball. And basketball. <laughs> I'm going to go number four. I'm going to go number four. You're so saving I, your number one slot again? I don't know what the number one is going to be. He, he did this last he time, too. Go. I he didn't go. go on purpose. He wanted to go. But I like my two through five right now. So I'm going to go love but and that... basketball number four. And honestly, based on what I know, I am very confident in two through four. Two through five. I'm, um, I'm going to go three. What I will say is... Uh, I think nostalgia has a has a hold on our generation. <gasps> Don't do this. Uh, there's a, some of those movies. I told you how I felt Don't about Martin. I won't go into that today. 
but to some of those stuff, man, you go back right, real quick. I just feel like it had a, a ton more potential. That's it. I'm good. Okay. That's it. Hmm. Okay, so what spot is left? I got I have my fifth slot left and I have number one. So yeah. you said, my number you guys one are so is his number five. <laughs> and I would love to hear this because I'm really confident in yeah. this being the actual number one. Got you. And I feel like this speaks to your well, I mean not your personality because yeah. five, I don't I've never seen you do that before. But number one, he just risking it for the biscuit, you know? Like <laughs> you he doesn't saying? care. Go for the big show. <clears throat> I'm so sorry, Al. Oh fuck. See man. Oh, I fuck. love the game. I love the game. I love the <gasps> But if I leave no! Let's go. If I leave, will the fans still love me, man? <laughs> <laughs> That is your favorite movie. That you is told me that. My favorite movie. So bro. when you put Coming to America at number one, I was like, "What?" All right. Well, I, I, I will be honest. It's neck and neck because Coming to America was yeah, first. Yeah, 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 Coming yeah, to yeah. America, I saw it first. It came out first, right? And and then Paid in Full came. Paid in Full is your favorite. Movie. You told me that. But it's number five for you. So and I'm also damn. This, I, damn. I am okay with Paid in Full being the number one black that movie. Is, yes. It's a great on movie. my list. Great film. I, I'm Wait. comfortable with my great, list. Great film. I love my list. Great film. Wait, oh. this is actually. Oh, I love my This I'm is hurt. actually a great lesson. Yes. Sometimes you gotta risk it for Sometimes the. Sometimes you gotta go for the gusto. You, you like you oh. never know what's gonna go, but I was very confident in in how I placed my movies. And shout out to your selections when you came out with um. Training, training day, day number one. Woo. I threw it off. Of yeah, threw me yeah. Denzel, on my toes. Denzel on there. Tra- on my toes. Training day number yeah. two. I'm very confident okay. in training day being number two. Payton four being number one. A fucking Damn. classic. I love that. I truly oh, love that. And his, name, and his name was A oh, in the movie. Oh, yeah, that's hey, yo, A, what's good, baby? You came through with new BBSs on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Coming to America, being number uh, three for me, I'm cool with that. You got served, I think, as a fan favorite, but yeah. no, you I don't. could do with that being a no, number you five. Don't. <laughs> I'm so hurt. I could live with that being at number five. And yeah. what was the fourth movie that, that I had at number four? Uh, love yeah, basketball. Love basketball. Love basketball. basketball. Cool. Love basketball. Um, I am, oh my God, that is the perfect oh, list for me. My God. I'll take that for the black American oh, movies. So good, bro. I'm sorry, what would Alex. be your number one, Pierre? I'm sick. Um, damn. I have a good question. Uh, you ain't never seen half of them. I've yes, seen all of them. What you, you know talking about? They they think, think you know me. Shade. You think you know me? You don't know shit, yeah, boy. Yeah, talk your shit, twin. <laughs> anyway. I'm so is. offended today uh, with go the crazy. AI and all this. Damn, my number one, it, it's a toss-up between... Damn. Damn, they all good. That shit hurt. I love a Denzel movie. Training Day Classic. Uh, love and Basketball. It was, uh, it was a tearjerker, you know? Just a little bit. That shit hurt your shit. Yeah, yeah. Um, Get out! <laughs> I would say I would say paid in full. That's a, that's a classic. Classic, classic. bro. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah Alex, like it's a list. classic. I'm Alex. sorry, Alex. I they finally, were blind. I finally won. I know that. I know that hurts him. I, I know finally that hurts won. Him. I finally got something on the board after eight years of potting with you. I finally win. Can we say I won? Please? Yeah, nah, you smoked that. You smoked that. Yo, God damn, Alex. Hey, yo, shout out to my boy Saint Vaughn, man. Record like five hundred to one. <laughs> Hey, a broken clock is right twice a day, right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, y'all are worse than AI. <laughs> Fuck y'all. Hey, hey, you can't always win, right? <laughs> uh, no, and for, for the real yeah. culture lovers, uh, you got served is unanimously at number one. Thank you. <laughs> Rewatch the dance battle tonight. Thank you. <laughs> and the opening scene. I'm not mad at that. Uh, Thank you, guys. Um, I, I know we didn't get a chance, yeah. for me at least personally, I wanted to talk about Tony Rock. And Chris Rock not putting him you in. You didn't come to family. Patreon. We didn't, yeah. Oh, y'all did that? <laughs> we did the cool 30 on that. The cool one, too. Uh, I ain't even talking about that. Yeah, we got two. Don't worry about who, it. Who them niggas over there? I mean, do you have rapid fire thoughts? Uh, we would love to hear. Yeah, fine. Nah, give me your rapid fire. Nah, thanks. Shout out to the Patreon. Go check out my people's thoughts on Patreon. You feel what I'm saying? Nah, for real. Make sure y'all go check that out. I always right tell now. y'all, if y'all made it this far, there's no yeah. reason that you have not subscribed, like, commented, anything. I also want to give uh, some love to the Apple Podcast comments. There's a lot of people who leave their yeah. over there please make sure y'all do that because that is probably the best way for me to see you at least uh, YouTube gets a little bit spicy but uh the <laughs> Apple, <laughs> the Apple comment is cool for me no, like you, see you, you see the YouTube shit you see that you see the YouTube shit they, they love me over there say like oh, wait, wait, hold up that nigga be fucking me up over there but Thank y'all for uh, rocking with us this late into the podcast. It is what y'all need to know when you need to know on the Need to Know podcast. Please let us know what AI thinks of you. Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. Not only how great they think of Reggie, not only. <laughs> 
Yo, don't be laughing. Bro. I didn't make the. I don't know why they did that to me. I'm sorry, guys. Oh, and shout out to my auntie too. Oh yeah. Oh, shout, yeah. Out to, shout out to my auntie too. Cause this I don't know cake. if y'all saw this money cake here yeah. on the, the podcast. The entire time. The entire time we left here. That is called product placement. Hello. Um. Yeah. The, these cakes. It, it was dedicated to Pierre, his lovely family, his yes. lovely wife. Yep. 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 Um. And yeah. This. This is just a beautiful. That's amazing. You know, so Inception handcrafted yeah. money cake. Like that's what we aunt. like to do in the Slater household. Hey, listen. Just touch money and you know craft things. Come on. Shout out to Aunt Valina. Hey, uh, Aunt Valina, I, I think I saw you at the uh, Mixer two years ago. Mm-hmm. We family and now. And she's supportive. Yes. That's handcrafted. Yes. We family. Listen, hey. you my sis slash aunt slash... Yeah, we, I amazing. love you. You my sis slash aunt. It's On crazy. behalf of me and my family, we love you. That's amazing, yo. Yeah, this is beautiful. That this is, is beautiful. beautiful. Yeah. Thank y'all for tuning in to the podcast. We appreciate y'all. If you made it this far, there is no reason you aren't liked comment and subscribe at some point it's the need to know podcast what you need to know when you need to know on the need to know podcast we will be back again next week that, that color matches the background too i see what you did there that was uh, you, you yeah. know shout out to auntie lena yeah, you feel she me good gang gang gang